We good, Max? Wonderful. Uh, the meeting will come to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Thank you. Donna, roll call, please. Say no. Motion here. Item six, approval of the April general fund bill schedule. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion from Joe and a second from Gary. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, communications, uh, intermediate union. I don't have any specific update for tonight, but I am reviewing some information that the, um, Mr. Stallman sent, uh, information on the charter and cyber schools and their effect on public education. I've only gone through a couple of them. There were several long things that he presented to us very interesting, and I will bring them on to other board members as well. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, Clarion County Career Center, Okay, Career Center report. Last evening, we had a senior recognition drive through at the Career Center. Uh, majority of those students did go through the Career Center, uh, and there were many accomplishments that were recognized last evening at the Career Center. Um, also, the 2021-22 enrollment looks to be well over 380 students. The negotiations for contracts, uh, two of those have been settled, and we have two individuals that are business manager and as confidential secretary to be resolved here in the next week. Um, under, for building and grounds, I just want everybody to be aware that uh, there was a claim uh, for the coils, uh, 
There were fractured coils on the heating system and those were repaired. The cost of that the insurance claim was 20,000, 144.02, and it was covered all by insurance except for the deductible of $2,500. Uh, um, and we also had a roof inspection over there and we should know the results of that very soon. And uh, next week on the 25th is new student period, uh, parent orientation at the Career Center from 5.30 to 6.30. That concludes my report. Thank you, Joe. Next item is Legislative Representative Gary. Uh, the only thing I have is that uh, it was passed by the legislature that if parents would like their child to uh, stay in the grade they're in because they just weren't happy with the progress and feel they're not ready, uh, the parents have the right to decide that. Also, uh, today, uh, this is kind of legislative. Uh, I was able to spend some time with the uh, Lou ba uh, Baletta, who uh, was our US representative from Pennsylvania running for governor. He talked about a program that works very well called PI. It's called Partners in Education, where it provides an uh, apprenticeship for students to work with local businesses that the, the Hazleton School District tweeted their curriculum and started bringing in what we would call skills of local industry and businesses that students could uh, take in their high school and then in the summer have an apprenticeship with the local industries and businesses. So he said he would send me more information on that. And since I have the mic, I want to, uh, if you get the Oil City, Derek, I want to thank uh, uh, Vicki Blair uh, and Mr. Aaron for working with this, that uh, for 15 years now that we have a student from CL that uh, gets to work at the polling place at uh, Clearing Township. Uh, and this year we had uh, Brooke Bachman. She did a tremendous job, uh, it's 15 years running. We're the really only precinct that does this, and the student is paid. And uh, of course that was coordinated by my wife, and uh, we're happy to do this, and we wanna continue. So if you have a student that's gonna be 17, and they're, they're interested to see uh, Mrs. Blair, that we wanna continue that for every election, to have a student working at the poll, learning the ropes of, of election, they do get paid as if they were like any of the other people working at the polling place. So I wanna thank Mr. Aaron, Mrs. Blair, and Brooke, Brooke did a tremendous job. And uh, so th that's a great honor. And it was on the front page of the Derrick and Brooke's picture is inside. So thank you. Thank you, Gary. Next is the CLAEA representative. Good evening. Uh, there. Uh, we offer best wishes to Mrs. Tina Bennett and Mrs. Christy Taylor. We thank them for their loyalty to CL. We're wrapping up a very unique school year. Our membership completed all tasks assigned to us. Many lessons have been learned both literally and figuratively. CLAEA is hopeful that communications at all levels of our school district will be more open and accessible as we continue moving forward. CLAEA Last is month, this report encouraged CL to explore why our district is losing college accessible. The quest forward should be for CL to maintain the expertise and variety that we have, not to continue to reduce our offerings. It takes years to build an effective program of any kind, but especially music. Yet it only takes minutes for poor decisions to destroy a quality comprehensive program. Claims can be made that if staff reductions don't go as thinking, then hiring can always happen later. That is not an accurate claim. Once an education program is lost, it rarely, if ever, returns. The cost of education is far less than the cost of sacrificing our students' needs and interests. You are encouraged to listen to our frontline consumers, our students. Thank you. Thank you. Building Committee Report. Uh, Dave? Uh, we did the advertising, right, Amy, for the, and uh, now our next move is we're going to set up a meeting with the floor. Is that correct, Amy? Yes. We, Do we have a date for that yet? Or? We have a motion on here to have them come back and look at everything again and uh, maintain, you know, and figure out the, 
the whole caboodle again. And um, we, I have him ready to present at June 23rd meeting, at our next board meeting. Okay, but we have a building committee meeting before that, correct? Yes, we can. Yes, yes. we'll get that set up and we will publicize it, whatever it is set up for. Okay. I would just like to let the board members know in your packet is a list of the items that the principals, myself, and Mr. Pullman um, went through at our one board meeting so that that is there on things that we, um, our big wish lists, I guess, for the, um, the district with building. So that's there. Thank you. Finance Committee, Rebecca. The Finance Committee finished uh, up the law enforcement Stephanie and Amy, our preliminary budget that is going to be presented to the district tonight. And just so I'm clear and everyone's clear, my understanding is the next meeting with building is going to be a combined meeting, is that correct? Between building and finance? Yes, and it will be advertised as such. Thank you. Transportation Committee? Amy? Yes, we have met a total of three times, um, transportation, and the last meeting <clears throat> is agreed upon by the, <clears throat> the committee that was there to put on the agenda approval for an extension of the one year current bus contract to extend it just one year as is. And um, we will continue the beginning stages of looking at the possibility of one tier busing. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. It is definitely not happening in 2021-22. Um, we are just beginning phases of looking at the pros and cons of that. And if that is a, the pros outweigh the cons, those are the things that we will, we will take care of. But we will be having meetings between now and a year from now um, with the community as well to get your input and to share what we have discovered through talking with our transportation direct, director, our contractors, and the committee. Thank you, Amy. Uh, next item on the agenda is committee reports. Student board representative, do we have? Yes, all right. Baseball teams have made it to the playoffs this year, and the baseball team is in running for the first place in the KSAC. The senior trip is this Sunday, the 23rd, to Kennywood. The baccalaureate is scheduled for Monday night at Cornerstone Church of God at 7 p.m., and senior award presentation is Tuesday, the 24th, here in the auditorium from 1 to 2.30 p.m., and if anyone would like to come, you're more than welcome to. Thank you. Lauren, stay right there, please. Is Brady here? Okay. Um, I just want to present a small gift on behalf of the board. Lauren was our board representative last year as a junior, and this year as a senior. She was the one, the first ones, and um, it has been a pleasure to watch her grow as a young adult. Um, Beautiful woman, very smart, intelligent, and um, provided many good, inf good things for our school board and our district. And I just want to thank her for being a part of the board, and we wish her the very best in her career at college. And Brady, folks, he is our junior representative this year. And he has um, many other things he's doing and has, we've talked, and he has requested that he not continue as a senior rep. So I'm very happy to say that um, although we will miss Brady, and I do have a gift for him, I'll give him tomorrow, um, we, I have received five applications from junior, current sophomore and current juniors to be 
on the school board next year. So um, I have a addressed to all of them that we will be looking at their applications and in June they will be appointed to the board. Thank you both. Next item, Stephanie's big night. Go ahead, business manager's report. Say this is leaning towards Fisher, but it's not in that direction, but it is leaning. So, um, and it's not the best area, I understand, for everybody to see, so I apologize. We have to just deal with the um, presentation that we have in that um, area that we have. So, this is the first time I'm using these, so if I do something weird, I apologize. Um, but the Finance Committee has met um, on several different occasions um, for some long hours and some deep conversation meetings. There were some cuts made, but as usual, every year we ask for needs, wants, and wishes. So we do our due diligence in going through all of those 53 pages of expenses and make those determinations. Um, also, the Finance Committee had asked this year if we could create a contingency fund, so you'll see that there is a hundred thousand dollar difference. Ooh. It does play tricks. Um, in the 800 codes, and that is due to uh, some budgeted items that have moved to the contingency fund, and the board will make the determination before we spend that money that we can spend that money. Um, we also are. I'm going to pull this down if you don't mind. I'm staying far away from everybody. Um, we are also watching legislation. There are some items that will affect our budget, and if there's any changes when the state budget is um, completed, we will make those changes before the final budget in June. Um, the administration, sorry, this is really hard to see. The administration and the board will also be meeting on the but as you can see, if you can see, maybe you need binoculars, um, we are projecting a $275,000 deficit for the preliminary budget of 2021-22. In the board, you each have the PowerPoint in your folder since it's so far of a distance to see this. Um, the big conversation, property tax discussion. The Finance Committee made it a point they didn't want to raise the taxes for the community this year. So this budget does not have a tax increase included in the budget. Um, we're just using the same tax revenue estimate for the 21, for the 2020-21 budget for this one also. Um, one question that Gary Sprawl always asks me is, if we raise the taxes one mil, how much does that cost us? Um, as an estimated approximate with um, collection rate into consideration is around $81,000. For this tax revenue, I do want to make a statement that it does um, use the, the, the um, payment periods that have always been with our tax collections. So discount face and penalty periods are the same. That being said, uh, I just want to explain Clarion Limestone is located in Clarion County and Jefferson County. And because of school code, there's a stabilization that takes effect. So even though um, I'm saying we're not raising taxes, which we didn't, it actually will lower the taxes slightly for Jefferson County. That's due to assessed values and market values that are taken into consideration. So, Clarion County is still showing at 60.55 millage rate, and Jefferson County would be at 39.43, and it was 39.61 for this school year. Um, for our revenue, other than taxes, because that's a big piece of our revenue, um, can see possibly that our increased revenue is $100,000 projected for 21-22. Uh, that is mainly due to um, a 
health insurance loyalty, loyalty program, we received or will receive $66,000 for being in Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield loyalty program. And you see that in the local revenue, and you will see that increase. Um, state funding, the state budget has not finalized yet. We always are required to finalize our budgets um, before we know what the state is going to do for the school districts. Basic ed funding and special ed funding in this budget are allocated the same as prior years, just because we don't know for sure what we will get until the budget is finalized. Um, and our state share of FICA and retirement reimbursements are based on our projected payrolls. Um, federal revenue, at the time we don't have the ESSER II or the ESSER III grant written, so that is not included in this budget. So for expenses, um, as you can see, salaries make up 44% of our budget, and they are all estimated on contracts. So whatever our contracts, approved contracts are, that's how we estimate what um, salaries will be for the next year. Um, same with benefits, they are based on contracts and what's required for the district to provide for all employees. Um, we will see a 3% increase in our medical coverage. Um, and PISER's employer rate withholding in 2021, it was 34.51. And in 21-22, it is 34.94. So the school district is required to pay that in. We do get a subsidy back, and it's around 59 to 62% that we receive back in those expenses. So for the 300s, the professional and technical services, um, don't touch the screen. Sorry about that. Um, I forgot to mention the benefits are 32% of the expenses for the district. Um, the professional and technical services, that's 5% of the total expenses budgeted for the district. Um, this category is made up of um, our services with the IU, our solicitor fees, our tax collector commissions, um, and required audits uh, with our tax services. The material amount in this difference, um, you can see that it decreased $57,000 from last year. Um, the district did hire our security officer instead of contracted the services. So next year, that's why you're seeing a decrease in that category and an increase in the salaries and wages. For the 400s, there really wasn't any material um, difference, $6,000, um, nothing to bring to anyone's attention. The 500, that is other purchases purchased services, and you can see that that ranks third for total expenses. It's 11% of our expenses. And a lot of that is um, for the IU operating costs, sports participation fees, transportation for busing and vans, um, and sports, um, and other LEA tuitions, institution tuition, and cyber charter tuition. This is where I was talking that legislation could really play a part in our budget. Um, they're trying to firm a, a rate for outside cyber. Um, right now it's calculated on our budget amounts and um, it varies with non, with regular ed and special ed. It's, right now we're looking at $12,000 for regular ed, $27,000 for special ed. Um, the state is trying to make it that the regular ed, I believe, is $9,000, and then special ed will be based on a category and then a multiplier. So if that would go into effect, that would be a material difference for the district and for all districts. So I just wanted to bring to your attention that for 21-22, we are estimating $337,000 in outside charter schools.
For the 600, the supplies, um, that makes 4% of our budget. Um, this is the fifth highest category. Uh, general supplies are for instruction, support services, administration, maintenance, and sports. And also softwares that we provide to everyone in the district. Um, the 700, it's $26,000, almost $27,000 of our budget. This actually is all replacement equipment, um, and we are budgeting for some additional Chromebooks, interactive TVs, um, replacement computers for the cafeteria, and some dehumidifiers. The 800s, which is other, that makes up 1% right now, and that is due to the 100,000 we put in contingency that the board has to approve before we spend. And the others are the dues and fees um, for district employees, instructional classes, and student activities. The 900 object, which makes up 3% of the total budget, um, that is our bond payment for the district and at this point in time that is our final bond payment for the district and that will be discussed in the building committee on when we how we decide how we move forward um, with the projects that we will continue on. so i just want to thank everyone that's involved in the budgeting process it is a huge process and i really appreciate um, the administration the staff um, chris hamilton and Trisha Parker and the Finance Committee and Amy, everyone. It's it's the whole entire district that works on the budget. So thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Do there any board members have questions? Anything to discuss about the presentation? Moving on to item C, superintendent slash administrative team reports. Amy, starting with you, I believe. Do you want to give her your report, Mr. Aaron, or do you want me to just go ahead? Uh, there was a message that went out today uh, that graduation will be remain on the 27th. Uh, at the drive-in, there will be a rain date, or rain location of the gym under the mitigation wall. We can be able to fit enough people in there if, if needed. Um, Mrs. Taylor um, is off today and tomorrow, and um, in just in the interim, I'd like to let you know that if there are any concerns or issues that come up when she is not here, um, they know to come to me and I will provide some advice and today we had a little critter that we were trying to to capture so um, we had a, everybody involved mr. Graf and mr. Coleman there are that we're waiting for them to be our heroes in the situation so um, I do want to let the community know that the applications for an elementary principal were re were due Monday we have received six applications one person has declined and so we were at five applications and I will be speaking with the board president and vice president about how to continue the process of hiring an elementary principal one other thing before I do a little presentation here uh, turnaround day. Everybody's wondering, what is this turnaround day on the last day of school? And it's something new at CL. I don't think anyone's going to argue about it. Um, they haven't yet. They don't know a whole lot about it, except that it is the last day of school for everybody, K-12. to It is next Friday, and the buses run as normal. The high school students get here at 7.30. They go get the elementary. The elementary get here at... 9.15, am I saying that right? Or 9, pardon me? Okay, around 8.45. So that will happen, that's normal. But 
and breakfast will be served. But then the high school will stay and be released till 9.15, and they will be released that day at 9.15. So they will be with their teachers, their friends, to say goodbye, sign yearbooks, do those kinds of things you do, sign shirts from 7.30 to 9.15. The elementary school will be here from 8.45, and they will leave at 10.30. So that will be in the next parent message as well, but um, that gives the kids some time to say goodbye. It also is um, a day to assist the teachers, as it is a long day, the last day of school, when um, everybody's ready to start summer vacation. So. I hope that it is something that we can begin as a tradition. We'll see how it goes and get some input. So that is what we call turnaround day. It does count as a school day. Okay, before, what I'd like to do first is, you will see up here, I have a quote, not a quote, but a saying that personnel versus personal feelings. And what I'd like to talk about first is the personal feelings of our personnel. And that is celebration of Tina Bennett. And the reason I want to do that is because she has been here very long. She has done tremendous things. She is, and I know I don't say this often, but I share this with her personally, irreplaceable. She has created programs. She goes above and beyond. I'm not sure she sleeps. I know she hasn't been eating. And um, she has won an award that will be presented to her thir next Thursday evening. It is the PMEA President Phil Staddle is going to be congratulating on her. She was selected to receive the 2021 PMEA Citation of Excellence in Teaching Award for District 3. Can we give her a nice round of applause? Mrs. Bennett in, in a little while later in the uh, meeting as well, but I wanted to start with that. The other two music teachers in the department, Mrs. Emily Colson and Mrs. Jen Hubler, they are, they are being empowered to take on new roles possibly to continue the music program without Mrs. Bennett. And for them, it's got to be a very scary situation. I, I've been there, done that, because Tina has been their rock. But this can also be a time for them to show the talents that they have, because they have many. Whenever someone resigns, or someone retires, it is my job as the superintendent, every time that happens, to talk with the administration, look at schedules, and see what is best for the district, both educationally and fiscally. I have been asked to show if we can have our music department with just two people, the two that I have shared their names. That is my job. My job is to show that. I'm going to show that. However, at the end, there are a couple questions that also will be answered. So in a sense, I'm asking you to allow me to do this part of my job that I have to do, which is not always fun, but it is factual and it needs to be shared. It's only right to be shared. The personal feelings that many of us have for all three of these people 
are there. They're true, they're valid, no one is saying that they shouldn't be. But I need to look at the personnel. And it is a fact, it is a fact, that the music department can function with two teachers. Please bear with me till I get to the end of the presentation. It's not long. know that Mr. Aaron and Mrs. Taylor met together and they met with me. They met with um, Emily and Jen. They gave them a suggested schedule. Jen and Emily were able to move it around however they saw fit. And I personally talked individually with each of the three music teachers. And that was probably the best decision that I, I've made, to take that time, to take and listen to them, which their administrators have done as well. In talking with them, and they're here, so if I'm misrepresenting something that I took notes on and shared, please tell me. High school teacher number one, there are 10 periods. That teacher teaches four scheduled, bear with me, classes. This, you, this is my point. The high school teacher number two teaches four of ten classes. And what I mean by teaching is it's a scheduled class where there are like a seventh grade chorus or an algebra class that Ms. Hubler taught. Elementary teacher, I put in six out of 11 classes. She teaches every grade level each week. And there are times in that schedule where there's open times because there aren't five third grade classes, but she teaches a third grade every week. So out of a day, there are six out of 11 classes taught. So the question is, on paper, this, taking this, and then taking this, and putting it into this, works. It is doable. It's my job to share that with you. What? as you're sitting there, and I know that everybody wants to jump out of their seats and say, but, so I'm gonna give you the but. But what do they do all those other times? This is what they do. They have study halls. There may be two in the study hall with them at that time. They may leave their study hall and go teach a guitar lesson to a student. They may bring that ukulele, ukulele student into study hall and be in study hall and also address the ukulele student who's on an independent study possibly. They teach lessons in those other times in their schedule. They teach electives other times in their schedule, such as well, Sensations is a class. I'm trying to think. We have ukulele, Keyboard. keyboarding, oh, guitar, um, ukulele I mentioned, theater, theater. theater. thank you, modern band. modern band, which has been a big hit this year, jazz band, jazz band. music theory. theory, thank you, everybody. Okay, so they also have lunch duty, which not everyone has, and if I could do something about that, I would not put anyone in lunch duty. I wish I had the magic wand. But you know what? We have our teachers in there because they know the kids, and they get time to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. I love lunch duty. I go down, and that's what I do. I talk. You'll see Mr. Graff, our police officer. He's He's down there all the time. 
we have one that does student dismissal. In speaking to her, it has been something she has done for 15 years. The parents look for her. The kids look for her. The drivers look for her. She knows everybody. And that is, to her and us, a very important job. We are not dismissing that these things are not important. Can others do those positions and those jobs? My job is to say, yes, they can do study halls, they can do student dismissals, they can do lunch dates. I need to, so, can the classes be placed into two positions? Both staff that are remaining are certified to teach K-12. That is their certification. They are able to do that. Voice and instrumental. The required classes for our music department are not affected. They still receive their 30 minute duty free lunch. And I have to share that financial savings is over $100,000 a year. So, in conclusion, can this work in the district schedule? Yes. Would a part-time or full-time additional teacher be better? Yes. additional staff member is a positive for our students. Is the disease decision easy? Absolutely not. Does the decision need to be made tonight? No. It is not a board vote agenda item. It is, and who is whose decision is it? It is a managerial decision, an administrative board decision. The board hires. We as an administration team are sharing what that that answer is yes. However, these are the things and what I talked about that they do and how they are a big part of other things in the district are important. And I'm sure that's why you're all here tonight. I'm just gonna stop right there for that. I wanna end with something that the board isn't even aware of. I remember sitting up there, standing up there, four years ago, interviewing for this position. And I remember looking back in that left corner, there were students, that was the student section. I remember the board members all in this front row too, staring at me. It was very nerve wracking. I came into that interview, I didn't have anything to lose. I had a job, principal at an elementary school, loved it, it was a school for my children. It's where I grew up, where I went to school. My kids were still there. But I came here because I wanted to help others in a more impactful way. And I remember those students sitting there. And I remember getting letters from them, the student council members. They are, some of them maybe are here, I'm not sure. There were, most of them were juniors and seniors. And they wrote me a letter. And they said, you are our one that we hope is chosen because you said the important words. I'm here for the students. I make every decision for students. This is the hard part of my job. This is for the taxpayers and the community and the board to understand where we are. Financially, can we have a part-time person, a full-time person? That's a discussion with Mrs. 
Smith, and the board. Each one of us, as I stand here tonight as your superintendent, please give me two more minutes of your time. The past year and a half has been rough for everyone. Things have been taken away from us. Things have been lost. Jobs have been lost. Students' activities have been lost. Everyone in this room has lost something, whether it be a human and very important to their life, or an activity or something special to them. Tonight, right now, I want to address the school district's climate as of today, May 19, 2021. Are we in a good place right now as a school district? No. Are we in the worst place as a school district right now? No. The communication, or should I say, the way information is being communicated and needs to be delivered in a different way. The situations this past two weeks are not settling for anyone. Graduation, music program, senior trip, summer school activities and summer school decisions, It's unsettling for everyone. Everyone here in this district has a job to do. Is everyone doing the right tasks for them? No. Teachers are spending hours and hours trying to fix technology. Guidance counselors are addressing discipline. Principals are inundated with emails and phone calls to the point that they cannot get into the classrooms to see our clients, the students. Again, this starts with me. For any stress, heartaches, or emails I haven't answered the last two weeks, or the phone calls I have not returned that I am unaware of because I am very diligent with that. However, if there is any of that, and any stress and heartache that I have caused, it was not intentional. Those who have worked with me for four years know I am a leader. I inspire staff and students to take risks. Next year, we will repair ourselves. Some district employees will be given the roles that they were made for, that they were hired for. They were hired for. No longer will staff be doing things they have just always done because no one else has done it. We will realign from the top down and from the bottom up. Everyone in this district will have a purpose to come to work and enjoy their job, including myself. A student, every student, will come to school for a purpose. There's a purpose why they have and want to come to school. Change is not easy, but it can be healthy. But it takes everyone together to make it happen. 
And that includes the school board, myself, the staff, the students, and the parents, and the community. Let's be a community again, and more with pride. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, just to recap, that was a presentation that neither I nor any of the other board members have seen. So I thank Amy for preparing that to give the explanation. I know there's been a lot of rumors and uh, scuttlebutt people talking about what is going on. We've all heard, just like you, what the explanation is, the rationale, the logic. So this is the information sharing point from Amy. I'd like to ask board members, does anyone have any questions for Amy? And I want to keep in mind, everyone needs to understand, there, as Amy indicated, there is no agenda item on our motion, or on our agenda tonight. We are not voting one way or the other, to hire somebody or to not. We are going through the process. Amy has now explained what the administrative team has done. Now you as board members, are there questions that you would like to ask of Amy concerning the information she shared. Is there more information you'd like her to get? Do you have questions about what she said? This would be the time for you to ask that question. Gary, you have some? Why don't you, wait, why don't you grab a microphone there? I have uh, questions and comments, and uh, one thing I've noticed by looking at the schedules that we have received of our music staff of course, <clears throat> I was a teacher and in a district where we had a great uh, elementary music program at that time, and especially instrumental. And it just doesn't seem like we're offering our students enough private lessons in the elementary. Because uh, as a teacher, I constantly had kids coming out of my class throughout the day, uh, a couple times a week for band lessons, small group lessons. And we had a, a great band, and uh, uh, I, I, just, I do have some concerns. Uh, I have a minor in music. I love music, support it. Uh, my boys went through the program with sensations and band, and I, and I see here, I think we should actually be adding more classes, uh, you know, more with music appreciation and history, longer uh, piano one, piano two, I just wonder why we're not offering more than what we had in the past, and I, I think we should. And I like to have some of those questions when I look at the schedule. Uh, an elementary course, an elementary band. Uh, why aren't we having more band lessons, private and group ones? Uh, and I've seen it, I've seen it done. Uh, and music is in very important. I'm. I didn't know uh, that our one music teacher also taught math, which I think is a plus, because, you know, as research says, uh, uh, people that are musicians, it really helps with their math skills. And, uh, and actually, I'm just going to give my opinion. I think we should have more uh, music offerings, more art offerings, uh, working together. Professional opinion. I'm a musician. I have 36 credits in music. I have a minor in music, and uh, I think it's very important. Uh, and I, I think with the retirement of Mrs. Bennett, who uh, my boys had, and uh, she will, uh, she's just not a great music teacher. She's a great person. She's an honorable person, and we will miss her. For, for you know this uh, program and like I said I was a teacher at a bank and I saw what we did and we had uh, Mr. Twilliger was is a great uh, band director and I think maybe we should get some information how they do it I think we need to offer more not take more away as, a, as an instrumentalist I played four instruments you wouldn't want me to teach your vocal <laughs> I was not a vocalist 
Okay, yeah. so if I could summarize, Gary, what you're saying. I, I think is, we need, but I'm just saying, what I'm saying is I understand what they're feeling as a musician myself, and I think I know what our administrator, when you re, have a retirement and you replace someone, you are making savings there. And uh, even if we would, and I hope we do replace, that's my person, that even someone with some experience. And uh, so I would like some questions of why we haven't been offering more uh, with those classes. The question though, I think what you're getting at, because again, the whole point is to share information because there's a lot of, my perception is, there's a lot of people that think that we as a school operate behind a curtain and and we're not sharing information and we're, we're doing things in secret. And my, the whole point of this exercise is to openly share what has happened, what the thought process is, to not claim that Amy or Mel or Chris okay. or, or anybody has exclusive rights to saying what happens and what the right answer is, is to be open and be, I've encouraged them since I started in this role, to don't be afraid to make a mistake, but share your ideas, throw it out there, and if somebody has something to add to it, we can make it better and we can be better as a whole. So we, to take what you're saying as a constructive way to move forward, you're saying let's look at course offerings. I don't disagree because one of the, my understandings, and I don't know if you covered it, Amy, but my understanding is you're not talking about taking away curriculum, is that correct? Required courses are not taken away. The required courses they have to have. That's like one course. So then the issue would be the elective courses, correct? Correct. Okay, so what we need to do, you're saying, Gary, is we need to take a look at what the course, the elective course offerings are, what our numbers are, what we're offering, and how many students are taking that. Right. We need, you know, maybe adding more. Uh, you know, I, when I looked at the schedule, I was wondering, because I had parents contact me even before this issue came up, that their kids love to sing, but they're not dancers, and that's why some of them maybe didn't try out for sensations. And I'm wondering, maybe, you know, we should also, you know, uh, have a, just a regular high school choir, 10 through 12, you know. You know, there's a, a lot of guys don't want to be moving their legs and stuff up on a stage. I'm just saying that. But I'm wondering why we haven't in the past, not knowing what the schedules were until recently, uh, in which I've seen from okay. Gary, so, I think, Mel, did you want to add something on that? Yeah, Gary, if you remember on, on some of the past board meetings that I have since in the last three years brought to you five different music electives. We have, we have put in five more music electives we put in two new art electives. Um, we renamed with Mrs. Irby, we worked on uh, renaming three of them so that it could include more students. And, and you know me, I, 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 I went through the same <coughs> programs with, with Tina Bennett, I do half the dance moves that they know. You hear um, Jazz Gloria kick in and, and I can probably do the whole routine. Um, we're, we're just running into, we don't get the numbers. What, what I'm trying to present to you is when we do a, a course load, when I run it, after, in the first run, we have to, we have to knock out some. Um, I knock out some business classes, I knock out some art classes, and, I, and what it is is, and, and probably Mr. Stampus and I are not doing what you guys would want us to, we're, most schools cut out a class if they don't have at least eight students. I will tell you right now, Jeff and I sit down, and if we have three students, we try to run it to the next run, hoping that we can somehow pull another kid in. But I can't run, I can't run electives it, consciously with the, the amounts of money that you guys spend on, a, on personnel with one or two kids. Like that's, that's the, I, I know you're saying about private lessons, but I don't feel comfortable as an administrator using taxpayer money to pay for private lessons that when I was a student, I went to Lydia Crooks, got my private lessons for, for, for things. And... Okay, thank you, Mel. Uh, Larry, you wanna add something to that? Yeah, thanks, Cynthia, is this on? Yes, it is. Um, a couple things I wanted to say, you know, this has been a hot topic uh, throughout the community for the last couple of weeks. Um, I've, been, I've been pulled aside couple different times and that's fine 
uh, when you when you get on this board, and even though I'm on it as an interim, that's that's fine. You know what you're in for. The the one thing I didn't appreciate um, is being told by someone that the board had already met on this subject. Anyone that knows me, and many of you do, know that I have attended numerous board meetings over the year. I have been at that microphone, and now I'm at this microphone. Let me assure you, I am the very first person, correct Nathaniel, to rail on Sunshine Law. And I will assure you that there has been no discussion by this board, as a board, if, if individual members have discussed it, Kathy Henry and I were at the polls yesterday when I, when I was done voting. We talked for about five minutes or so. Quite frankly, the person I probably talked the most to about this subject is Rhonda Shook. And my friend Rhonda and I um, had good discussions. We didn't always agree, but we weren't disagreeable to each other. And I think part of the key tonight, while I expect a lot of comment, and I think that's wonderful, I'm glad that people are showing up not just for athletics. And, and let me tell you, when I was in high school many years ago, I was an athlete, but I was also in the choir. And I did a lot of things in the choir, and it was very important to me. So I know the value, but I don't know where Tina is. Um, oh, oh, way up there. Um, but I know the value of a music teacher. Believe me, I do. Um, I think that we need to look at this a little bit more. There are definitely two sides to this. We cannot ignore open classes with nothing going on. Mel just made a statement about having a certain amount of kids in a class. I would ask if, with all due respect to Ms. Pierce I see back there, if you had one class, one person sign up for calculus next year, would you run the class? No, we would not run it in the first room. Right. Um, which would be a lot tougher to get kids to sign up for calculus than it might be for guitar, ukulele, etc. And, and all those things are wonderful. But my point is, when people come to make, make their comments, please, let's have civ civility. There's been a lot of uncivil rest in our district the last several weeks. And I, look, I'm a big boy, I can take it, but let's, let's have a discussion about things. That's all I have for right now. Thank you. Yeah. Kathy, would you like to ask a question? Um, this is just a, a question because of something that was presented to me, and I'm just going to need clarification. So, some time back, when we had a retirement of an individual from the music department, we then had two teachers um, covering the music department my understanding. I wasn't on the court, so I'm trying to like piece it together. Um, so when, at that point in time, when we had only two people because of a retirement, um, when did we add the third person? Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this clear because, did we, why did we add the third person? And how long did it take to get the third person and was it what changed from then till now? Does that make sense when I'm asking? That would be a Tina Bennett question, I think. Okay. Sorry, I thought you were shaking your head, Mel. I didn't want to put you on the spot. I'm right here, and I can tell you that I had to teach from 3 to 3.30 every day. I started here at my normal high school time and ended at the elementary time with no compensation whatsoever. The problem was, I started the year and I, we found this out literally days before and I had to add the fifth and sixth grade uh, curriculum over there, get my head wrapped around that and the fifth and sixth grade choir and my father-in-law passed away day three of school. I was in and out of school trying to make it all happen. We didn't have time to grieve it because the 12 or 14 day period had ended and so I taught for 180 days 35 minutes past my legal contract for this district for free. It's and then they brought in Jen part time. It's my understanding that, correct me if I'm wrong, Mal and Amy, that the schedule that 
Ms. Penn is referring to is not the same as what you're proposing now, is that correct? Yes, um, there's two different schedules. There's one that I presented to, with Mrs. Taylor to the, to the two remaining, or two remaining uh, music teachers. Uh, then we worked through with some of the stuff that they were asking. I, I know Jen really wanted to be able to do elementary school band. Uh, Ms. Alderton was, uh, because of 15 years, she's really helped with the after school dismissal. I worked it around. Um, I'm not quite as thrilled with the, the second one with theirs, but it does fit their schedule better. Um, there's one less elective doing it that way, doing it the way they wanted to, but they, we have one, a person in uh, high school schedule. We have hours for the elementary school schedule that we know we're working over. Thank you. And again, does anyone else on the board have questions? Because the whole idea is to, if there's more information we need or other fact gathering that we need to do, that's the whole point of this exercise is to see what that is. Does anyone else? David? Yeah, no, I'd just like to say, you know, I was lucky I was on vacation the last two weeks. And uh, not probably the rest, but the board needs more information on this as far as, I, I'd like to know all the electives that we've offered, be interested in what we're going to lose by doing it, and, and then give us all the information that we can make a qualified decision, not a snap decision. That's why it's not a decision. I think Tina needs to be part of that discussion along with uh, the other two music teachers, with the administration, and they need to come back to us then. It's not our job to set up a schedule. It's our job to hire a teacher and to take care of the students and the tax dollars. So I think they need to get together and then come back to us and tell us the pros and cons right down to it so that we can make a good decision on what we're going to do. Okay, anyone else have any questions? I mean, that I think mirrors what Gary was saying too as far as the schedule, I think we spent it too. So we understand that the schedule, the course offerings, those are key things we need to make sure we have that uh, taken care of or addressed. Nathaniel, I just have one more yes, comment, I guess. I don't believe, Dave, with all due respect, that this is a, right now at least, is a board decision. We're not voting on no, anything tonight. No, that's not what we're saying. Okay. We got a month to come back and let us know, you know, but we want all the information. What kids, what the students are losing, exactly how it would work. And I, I agree with Gary, a lot of what Gary said, which is unusual. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, at the same time, a board can only make a good decision with the information that they're given. And we can't get one information from there and here. Our information has to come from the administration. So the, the, the teachers, the music department, everything need to get together with the administration, sit down as a group, and tell the board, we know the numbers. That's our job. But tell the board what that savings is going to cost our students. Well, I think, if I understood the presentation, it sounds to me like there's been not one but two different times that the administration has met with the music teachers. So I think they've already started that process. I think what we're looking at is, and I think it doesn't have to end here tonight. If, if people in the public, if there's something they think that there's a concern or an issue or something that's been overlooked, that's the whole point is contact the, your, the teacher, the administrators, whoever your comfortable contact person is to get the information back so it goes through the chain of command up to Amy and her team, and they can make a modification if they need to, or if they want to change their recommendation to us, they have all the facts, because that's the whole point is to be transparent that's, and to make sure we have That's my whole point right there. And I'll disagree with you, Larry. I'm, we're not gonna make this. I mean, we're here to listen, but at the same time, we need all of them. I, I wonder, and I don't know if this is appropriate or maybe they were planning on it, if uh, Jen and Emily are here, if they, I, I, I would be curious about their thoughts. I kind of accidentally ran into each of them when we 
spoke for just a couple minutes, but, uh, and, and Emily, I haven't been out to breakfast in I don't know how long, so I can't believe I saw you this morning. But I think that if, if you have any, I, I'm really curious what both of your thoughts are. I know a lot of people have said, are we still gonna have sensations? When I was in high school, which is somewhat irrelevant, but we didn't do all the dancing and stuff. Um, you know, we stood and sang, but it was 120 people, so it wasn't as conducive to moving around. And he brought his award to the budget committee meeting to very, show us he was a musician. Very proud of musician, that. Just you so you all much. know, because we questioned his singing ability. So he brought his little statue. To well, I will say I'm very proud of that day because I went to district, regional, state, and all eastern. And, and <laughs> talking about and um, I'm, I'm as proud as that as anybody that won a trophy for um, athletics yeah. um, so and we're I, proud of it too. there there's an opportunity to, if you want to take it you don't have to let's Larry let's do public comment all at once because okay. we, need, we need to do this orderly and run it through um, and then we need to address that because if everybody wants to talk that's not going to happen we're going to have to modify the meeting so we'll need to address that. Is there any other questions from the board as far as the information being shared? One question about the schedule. Uh, how do we run an elementary band at 725 in the morning when elementary doesn't even start then? Uh, I just, I'm wondering how we do that and I, I just, why can't it be done during their school day? What's your basis for that, Gary? What are your, I don't understand well, what you're talking about. Uh, just a possible maybe Schedule. When I was first hired here, there were about nine kids in the fifth and sixth grade band. I was brought in after the last time this happened when we were. You just like it's working. Thanks. When there were just two music teachers. That's how I came to be. I was hired at 50%. My hours were 12 to 4, and I was told to build the program and earn my way to full time. And that's what I have done. But I am the result of the last time they tried to make two music teachers do the job of three or three and a half. So when I was hired here, there were pull out lessons. We were on a rotating schedule. At the elementary, there was that day, day one, day two, day three. The kids we're forgetting their instruments on the rotating days because the schedule changed too much. They weren't allowed to come out of math, reading, science. They weren't allowed to come out of recess. They couldn't miss lunch. I had no time to pull them but a study time, and that didn't line up with my scheduled hours over here. So I had no time to work with them. Teachers were telling kids that they couldn't come down because they had to take a test or they had to review, and the kids were forced to make a choice between learning to play an instrument, or doing their studies, or their teacher would be mad at them. My solution, Dr. Wolf's last year here as elementary principal, we sat down and we worked this out. I proposed, if, since I'm on the high school schedule, can we please have the elementary kids ride the high school bus? The band kids on the bus would assist the elementary kids to make sure that they were okay on the high school situation on the bus. They would come in in the mornings, and I would have an hour and a half of uninterrupted time with them every day. And it has worked. They don't have to choose. They can come in in the morning, they get more time, five times the instructional time of what they were getting in half hour pull out lessons. Additionally, when anybody was testing in the elementary school, because of the way the buildings are, the ceilings, I wasn't allowed to make noise because the music room, the sound traveled upstairs. So the entire concert season, when the PSSA testing, or any test, I wasn't allowed to make noise. So the logical solution was to bring them in in the morning, are still on the high school schedule, and they would get five times the instructional time. They were on a set day. They went by the day of the week instead of the rotating schedule. The bus drivers knew when to pick them up, and it has worked wonderfully since then. Any other questions from the board members on the presentation?
presentation. I, I like to ask Jen, Jen, can I ask you a question? Uh, Why weren't students allowed, allowed coming out for lessons? I, I want, I'd like to know that. I'm not sure. That's just what I was told. By who? Who told you that? The administration at the time. Who in particular? Dr. Wolf. Thank you. Okay. And Amy, do you have anything more on the superintendent administrative team report? I have something that I'd like to ask the board about and throw out there. If you guys recall back a, a year or so ago, when everyone was at home on the on YouTube, we had a lot of discussions with Mel about his, his contract and his position, and Mel has, has been very gracious and indicated, and Mel's going to get a chance to talk to I'm not going to shut him off, so if I said anything wrong, Mel's going to correct me. Um, Mel has agreed to serve as high school principal, even though that may not be his exactly uh, dream job, and we appreciate his sacrifice and his service. My feeling is that I think we should honor his request to try to work with him to see if we can find a way to get him back into the classroom. And I think that the first logical step to do that is to post for a high school principal. And I, I, I don't, there's no specific definitive plan beyond that. We are not forcing Mel out. That's why I'm talking about this now in a public meeting so that the rumors hopefully uh, won't exist or they'll be right instead of totally wrong like usual and it just post it and see what we get and then we as a board can decide and Amy and the team can decide whether we want to make a move whether it does it is something that Mel wants to do but if we don't at least post and see who's interested we're never going to do that and I, I would hate to see Mel feel like he has to go to another district if he really wants to be a teacher so if unless somebody has a major objection I thought I think we should at least post the position and before you talk, I'd like to just throw it out to Mel and just have you, if I'm totally crazy and you don't want this, Mel, what are you telling me? No, I, we, You're on. We've had discussions before. I know that I've met with the board on various occasions and I've met with Amy on various occasions. And uh, when I entered this, I, I was very pleased that the board gave me the opportunity um, filling in for half a year for Doug Rogers and then um, with the transition of superintendent and with Mr. Rogers leaving, I, I again expressed to the board at that time that I, I want to help out the district wherever I can. And that's, that's what I've done the 19 years that I've been here as, as part of the staff. Um, but I, I do want to express to the, the board right here that I, I do have a passion for teaching. Um, I, I need to get back with the students more than what I am. Um, the, the current role is not not um, not ideal for my family either. So I just I I completely understand from just doing business with you guys. I understand that we have to wait. We have to be patient. We have to look at what the all's there. But I do want at least uh, this board to know that 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 is. And, and I and I'm glad that Nathaniel brought it into a public forum. I don't know if everyone still knows that this is what my desire is because I don't get to really talk to them that much. But uh. well, thank you, Mel. And again, that is the whole point. I want to be transparent. Uh, I don't want to see Mel go anywhere. That's my thought. And again, that's I'm being transparent and honest with everybody. And I think that would be the best move for the district. So that we're trying to honor his request, thank him for his service, and that's how I see us moving forward. Does anyone have a problem with that, Larry? You want to I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but I, first I would like to state, this is the first time we heard this. This was not discussed, but the, this all new to us. I, I talked to Mel about okay. it. Okay. And I talked to Amy about it. And, and keeping in mind the thought process I think is very good. My only fear would be um, putting, putting out requests for applicants that you don't hire, because I think it potentially shoots us in the foot for hiring down the road. In theory, I like the idea, but I'm, I'm afraid if nothing happens, you might lose a good candidate in the future for the fact that we didn't hire anyone. 
What do you you mean if we put the um, if, we, if we advertise for a principal position and then don't hire anybody? You're saying yes. Right. Well, I guess that's the point of this discussion. Is if the majority of this board says no, we're going to make Mel State principal no matter what. No, I'm, I'm not be, saying we're going to make Mel State principal. No, I'm just saying there would be no point in posting. That's kind of the point of the discussion. But if people are open to that possibility, then we would post it, and then theoretically, if we get a good candidate, then the board would make the decision as a whole uh, to as to what to do. But if you if you posted for a principal position and we found a wonderful candidate. What's Mel going to do? Teach the choir. <laughs> well, that's, and that's, that's the part I think we have to build. We're trying to build trust here, too. We need transparency, we need trust. And that's what I'm saying. We want to work with Mel. I mean, I can't, no one can sit here and tell Mel, we guarantee you this spot, that spot, these duties, that duties. Like Amy was saying, every decision comes up. It's fact determinative. You have to look at a lot of factors beyond just the emotional, yeah, we want this. But again, to be transparent, I just don't see any other way to move it forward. If we don't post it, I don't see how Mel ever transitions out. If somebody has another idea, I, I'm all ears, and now would be a good time to, to share. You actually have a lot of options. Now, what all certifications do you have besides choir? Besides choir, I, I do not have a choir uh, background. I'm so Tina, can you help us out getting emergency certified? I, I can get emergency certified for what two years? <laughs> so you got two years of me singing the choir. I can dance. I'm gonna question that. Yes. <laughs> I learned all my dance moves from Tina Bennett. Oh wait, she said I can't dance. No, um, I have a, a social studies degree and then I have my principal certificate. So I, I can do K through 12 administrative and I can do. Uh, seven through twelve, any any social studies. But if, if I see where you're going with your point, Larry, we're bringing in two new principals. You know, obviously we can't pay for three principals, but we would have a period we want to have like a mentor type to get them used to the building so that it comes out good in a good way. So I think we got to think outside the box or. But I'm kind of like the thing. I, I don't know. I was on the board originally when I was hired. And as a social studies teacher, those of you that know it, and this is not a cut on anyone we have, he's the top. He really is. And I don't want to lose him as a person. He's a great person, also. So I think we got to look outside the box. And if Miles willing to work with us, it's worth the discussion to open it up. The board. I'm Daniel. Um, just, thinking Corey, about, ahead, just thinking about what you're talking about there. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not saying I disagree with what you're saying, it's a good idea. Um, we would have to find a position for Mel, you know, if you want to keep him in the district. And uh, him being a social studies teacher, I don't know if there's any, I asked him if there's any current openings, he said no, but I don't know if there's anyone in the future. Too, possibly. Um, I just throwing this out here, too, just thinking off the top of my head there, because I know, um, and I am now even be interested in it for like an interim time for him to continue to stay as a CL employee. Um, I know both. Uh, no, I can't talk. Both principals have asked for a dean of students, someone to help. If you'd be maybe willing to serve in that position in the interim, and then whenever an actual position opened up in which he could put in for, and then he could go in that position and in that time frame that if it's a year or two years that he serves as the dean of students or whatever you want to call it, you know, then he can maybe he could bounce into that position and go back to what he really likes to do. Idea. I agree, Corey. I think it's a good suggestion. I don't think you're far off from what Dave Eggleton is saying, is there there be an, a, the possibility of another administrative position to transition. Um, Kathy, did you want to be heard on this or no? I didn't know if you were grabbing your microphone or not. Um, I'm just not certain. I, first of all, Mel, I don't want you to go anywhere. So just know that up front. Just 
whatever. I, I think that you can do this job and and do it very, very well with the support that you need from the board and, and everybody else that's on your team. Um, but I don't want to disregard what's in your heart either. Um, my only concern is the district looking for two principals at the same time. I'm not, I'm concerned about if that sends a negative message to the community in the surrounding area, like what's happening at CL that they're now looking for two principals, like, you know what I mean? And maybe I should be playing devil's advocate like that, but I. Well, I understand, I understand. Like, the way I look at it is, is if we either worry more about what people are saying that aren't here, or we who are the I people guess I in it. I didn't want that to deter people. From what applying? Y yeah, just like, because they're wondering if there's something internally going on, and that's why I would. Right, no, I understand. That's also, that's also why I wanted to have this discussion at a public meeting, because I did not want any, I wanted to try to eliminate any of that, so that people understand that, because there was a lot of scuttlebutt about the past things that we talked about, and I wanted to be open and transparent, and this is something that I feel like we should, I'm only one of nine, but I feel like we should do it to be responsible to know. But I think we're, we're unanimous. All nine of us don't want Mel Dunn anywhere. And what I'm saying is that I see him going somewhere at some point, if he's telling us his heart's desire is to do something different, and we just tell him, yeah, be quiet and go be principal. I don't know, I'm just putting myself in his position, and I can only do that so much before I'd say, okay, I, I'm gonna have to do something else. Life's too short. I understand that part. Uh, Amy, would you like to be heard? No. Okay. All right. I don't want to put anything else. Let's go ahead and put it on the agenda, add it to the agenda to advertise. And then the rest of our discussion with Mel would be an executive session personal discussion. True, and it would be Everybody once we get down the what road. What we're thinking, what he's thinking now. So, I mean, we're getting a lot of holes of it, but i like to add uh, to the agenda to advertise for a high school. Okay, how? Uh, I made the agenda. Uh, just at the end? I don't. Holy cow. I have CC, I guess. So to you know, advertise for a high school principal. I don't know that that's. There needs to be a little bit more to that to uh, discuss you know, with the intention of the principal doing X. Uh, you know, I like Corey's idea, you know, uh, now it does seem odd that we're talking about just sitting, sitting right here, but, but um, if, you, if we just say advertise for a, a school principal while we have a school principal who isn't resigning, I think it may send, if we say with the intent of our current principal, I, I like Corey's idea, the dean of students, uh, whatever we're kind of going to do. Maybe it's going to be an interim situation, but it strikes me odd that we would look for a principal when we have a principal. If, if, we, have a, if we have a game plan, and I like the game plan, we need to state that in the motion, I think. Well, the issue is, I believe, is that you'd be limiting our flexibility. And, I, and I'm not a fan of either, of, as I said about the whole music discussion, I don't think we should shoot from the hip on the decision. To me, it's an administrative, uh, not administrative, it's a ministerial function of, of putting out the advertisement, posting it, and saying who's interested. We're not committing to, we're not firing Mel, we're not committing to hiring a particular person at a particular time, it's to see who is interested in the position. And then once we know that we have a candidate or some candidates and look at their schedule, then we could fine tune it, as Dave said, after we have a executive session with, with Mel, to talk about specifically what the options are, then we could fine tune it. But if we try to do that now, number one, we're shooting from the hip, and then number two, we're limiting our options down the road. I may be missing something if I, I feel like we may be putting the cart before the horse. My, my point on I would vote no on that. The advertisement is administrators aren't easy to find. Okay, if we get one, I mean, Mel knows what we're going to, what we're discussing and what we're working towards, okay? He might still be the high school principal for a year till we find somebody that will take the position or that we are comfortable getting the position. But unless we advertise it and get it out there and see who's out there, we're not going to know. At least we're being proactive 
and Mel will live with us being proactive. And I think it's a positive for the school district to be proactive on it and to advertise and see what's out there. We might get one good principal and have to re-advertise in December or whenever to get the second. We don't know that. But we're not going to know it until we get it out there and see what's out there. Or we might get an outstanding candidate for a high school principal, and we might have to ask, well, well, would you cover the elementary school for a year while we look for an elementary principal? But we're not going to know any of that until we put it out there. I don't disagree with you, Dave. Back to Larry, though. What's the alternative? I mean, do you have a different suggestion on how to get where we want to go as far as trying to be responsive to Mel? Jump in. I, I would vote no too because how can you think about adding another position in the high school when we're talking wanting maybe to eliminate a music when we shouldn't be doing it? We're not talking about adding another position. I didn't hear a board member say anything about eliminating music position. And nobody's adding a principal. That's I think those are two separate issues. Um, and, and We're not proposing. I mean, no one's proposing yeah. to hire two high school principals at the same time. It, it's, a, again, it's a, to but, have an organized so, so let me ask this. If, if, if you advertise for a principal and you find a good one, well, however good is defined, um, are we definitely hiring them? That would be a board decision. So I mean, let's say the board says, boy, we love this person. Um, are we hiring them? And then at what point or, or at what point is the discussion with Mel? It seems like a lot it all of happens at the same time. To me, it's all part of the same plan. I wouldn't do one without the other. You'd have to have a whole plan figured out to accommodate Mel and then hire the other person. I, 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 I guess my only last comment on it is that I feel like we're, we're starting down the road without a plan. I mean, I'm all for it. I just think we need to have a plan. And if we, if we can get a plan together, I, I don't know. I'm not like, disagreeing like, with you like, like Dave said, I don't know. The issue is, is that the options are to do nothing and not be not responsive or to give ourselves options. So, I mean, I'm only one person. So you guys can vote it down and say no and tell them only has to stay principal. I mean, that's your prerogative. That's what you want to do. Um, but if we, don't, if we don't do anything, I don't see that as being an option, in my opinion. That's why I'm asking for alternatives. If there's alternatives to it, um, I think we should talk about it. I don't have an alternative tonight, but I bet by next week I would. I mean, we just we just got this. We're sitting in front of an audience, and we haven't heard from half the board. So, you know, I think we need a little bit of time on this one. It's my only take. Anyone else on the board want to be heard? No? Saying the food makes you feel better. I'm just, I'm glad that you guys are willing to talk about this. Okay. I, I completely understand. Like, because we don't want to be talking about things all the time, close the door tonight. Most, most of you just now got hit with my feelings and everything. I, I completely understand, Tim. Like, but it, it, this is, this is a step. Just by being able to talk about it. If, if you're worried about how I'm feeling, I, I understand this may not be the best time to do this, do anything with me just to get the district. And again, as when Amy and I both were hired, I told her I, I'm here to help you. I'm here to, like, I've been in CL for how many years as a student and as a teacher. Use me as that type of information. Like, that's, I'm fine with if we need, need that to keep the district going, okay? I'm, again, thanking you guys that you're willing to talk about it openly. Very well. And again, I, I mean, we talked about a year ago, Mal. That's, that's how I look at things. And to me, a year is an eternity. And we, a year ago, you told us all. It wasn't secret. You told everybody what your desires were. And nothing happened since then. So I like to be uh, responsive. But Dave, you, do you want to make the motion or withdraw your motion? No, I, I still would like to see what's out there. We're not going to know until we see. And I mean, so I'd like to keep the motion for CC high school principals to advertise the one just to see what's out there. And um, then go from there, you know. Um, so we see what options we have. And go from there. 
Okay. All right. Uh, Dave has made a motion to amend the agenda as he stated, item CC. Is there a second to the motion? Second. We have a second from Rebecca Allison. Is there any further discussion among the board? Yes, Kelly. No, <laughs> as I said, I don't want you going anywhere. Um, I think we, we should take a, lo a little more time, and I think we, there should be uh, some kind of preliminary plan before we go looking. I'm not against it now looking at things. That's where your heart is. Um, I just don't want to jump the gun and be advertising for something when I want to know where you are because I don't want you leaving this district. Okay? That's the only reason I'm making that suggestion. Understood. Any further discussion? Further, if there's no further discussion, uh, let's just do a vote by show of hands. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. One, two, three. All opposed. One, two, three, four. Corey, you're opposed. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the motion is defeated. So we will not have a CC on the agenda. If there is no executive session. We had no executive session, so there is no executive session announcement. Um, now we're on item 10, public comment period. Uh, before I, I address the audience, I wanted to ask Larry. Uh, Larry, would you like to add public comment on this beyond what you've already stated? Sure, thank you. My daughter would probably say, put that microphone down. Um, I think during our, our last meeting, um, we, we kind of got rolling and put a couple things together that we should, uh, shouldn't have, and sometimes that does happen. But I wanted to acknowledge the two people leaving this district this year. Uh, first, Christy Taylor, who is, is not with us tonight, but Christy worked here many years as a teacher and then, of course, as an elementary principal. And we just want to thank her for all her effort and time that she put in. I know she's worked with a lot of things over at that elementary school and, and as a member of the CL Foundation, I've worked with her on a couple different items over there as well. So thank you very much to Christy. Second. And the woman of the hour, Mrs. Tina Bennett, who has given 37 years, I believe, to this school district. As I stated, I know the value of a good music teacher. Um, it's something you can give your whole life. And I've seen Tina over the years work with kids and bring kids out of their shell. Uh, I can assure you every singer is not a soloist. And I get to see some head shaking. Uh, I never was. And what Tina has done with some kids and putting on shows and and having them sing, let alone dance. Uh, and God bless you, Tina. You know, thank you very much for what you've done for everybody over the last 37 years. Uh, it's, it's, you know, interesting that, that our own high school principal, I believe, was a sensation back in the day. And, uh, but what you have done should, should not be glossed over. And I just want to thank you. I believe the board thanks you. We appreciate everything you did.
very heartfelt thankful thank you to uh, Kathy for many years of service here as a paraprofessional, working one on one with the number of students that we have had and uh, making sure that those students have achieved success. Um, and she's been truly amazing. And, and we've asked her to do an awful lot of very different things, unique things, bouncing around from building to building. Um, because of her certifications, we've utilized her last minute in a number of situations as well. And she's always taken those on, never once complained. Um, and she's probably going to be angry that I even brought her up. Um, but that's just the kind of person she is. She's absolutely, truly really amazing. And, and I'm thankful for the service that she has provided us as well. Show of hands, who is interested in making a public comment? Okay, I'll start with you, young lady. Could you tell me what the subject is that you'd like to talk about? It's about music. Music. By show of hands, who would like to talk about music? Okay, hands down. By show of hands, who wants to talk about anything else? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 15 so a lot of people want to talk about music what we're gonna do is probably start with two minutes and we'll go until we get to the point where it's repetitive and then we're gonna to have to probably keep the rest till the end because we do have a whole lot of items on the agenda that we need to talk about so that's how we're gonna run it you'll need to come down you'll need to state your name uh, the, where you're from and then you're going to have two minutes and you need to direct your attention or your comments to me, please. We can't, uh, we can't answer questions right now. I mean, we, if there's questions you want us to look into, we will be taking notes and someone will be getting back to you. But we can't have an a elongated question and answer period before the board right now. So, uh, you want to start over here and then work around to the microphone? What's up? Okay. I'm sorry, young lady. Uh, Mr. Shaw. I'm Randy. I'm Randy Shook, uh, Clarion Township. Um, I'll speak fast. I can't two minutes. Uh, first of all, uh, nothing against Mel because in my job I work with our part-time emails back and forth for student issues. I think we're deflecting though from what we're dealing with with Mrs. Bennett, Mrs. Hoogler, and Mrs. <laughs> we had no discussion whatsoever for very long other than Amy's display here about replacing the music teacher, but we suddenly out of the blue now have an agenda that changed and everything about Mel. We don't have a position for Mel. We could have put him back in the classroom when Mr. Gulovich retired, but we didn't. We eliminated that position. So we're going to create a position and pay Mel, no offense, and eliminate a position and not pay somebody. And there, was a comment made. there was a comment made that by a board member that maybe these two ladies should take it as a promotion when they're going to split that job in half. They're not getting more money though. A promotion that I get, I get more money. And also, they're instrumentalists. Their specialty, and I sent this to Amy today, is instrumental. Nathaniel doesn't defend murderers. He has a different specialty, but he's a lawyer. They're teachers. They're not vocalists. A Ford, a Ford Auto Tech can't do my Dodge because he doesn't have that specialization. Those women do a great job, but they're not vocalists. And Tina wasn't asked to be the band director before we hired Jen in lieu of a band director. So there was no band. So keep that in mind if you could. Woo!
And if we have two teachers, yes, it is possible to do the things you say they are, but are they gonna do at their best ability? No, because they're gonna be doing so many things. Like, what do you expect them to do? Like, put more on themselves for us? This is about us, but it's also about them. You have to think about, this is not, as Brandy said, this is not a promotion for them. You're just giving them more work that they didn't need. And we need that third person to come in, somebody new to come in. That's what I was most excited about with Mrs. Bennett retiring. Like, I, I'm gonna miss her so much. But the most exciting thing is somebody new to come in and to do all these new concepts and everything else. But we won't get that chance if we decide to take that position away. We won't get that. And we'll put more on Mrs. Coast and on Mrs. Coast. I don't think half of you understand. This isn't targeted to you. It's not supposed to be me, but I don't think you understand the effect of music on people. Even if you are a musical person, what's on in the radio music? Where are you in, the, in the, a shopping mall? What's on? Music. Music. It's this world. Everything. What do you enjoy more, music or math? If you're a really math specialist, I mean, you might like math, but it's half the population is going to be music. We need this position. We need this can't ask more of them when they're already doing their best. I'm Jacob Love. Uh, I'm from Plano. And this is not, it's somewhat based on what Regina said, but this is more technical. Um, I, as an instrumentalist, I play percussion. I play most of the I play all of the percussion that you see on the backstage. And this, I might get a little in trouble. I never really liked Mrs. Colson's class, but in that regard, when we get rid of Mrs. Bennett's class, we will be giving her more hours than she will be able to take on. And with that, I've heard that they're going to uh, compose, uh, not compose, uh, reduce uh, both the seventh and eighth grade classes to one class with uh, uh, all the students in there. And they would have completely different uh, opportunity than what we do now. Um, we would also be getting rid of, I know this is less of getting rid of her, but if we went to um, one like schedule for the busing grant, we would be getting rid of all of the beginner band and all of the advanced band of the uh, elementary, which a instrument uh, would uh, wind instruments usually takes two to three years to master completely. And they would have to start from scratch over at the high school with no prior knowledge of having the instrument. And I would say it would be much easier to learn it over there with you having less homework, less complicated homework, than starting a completely new instrument and having to practice. Okay, that's your good <coughs> I understand that it is 
not your intention to cut any classes or harm the music program. However, I argue that this would be the inevitable result. Currently, the plan as I understand it is to divide the choral director's work onto the other two music teachers. However, as many people have mentioned, these two teachers, while extremely talented themselves, both specialize in instruments, not voice. Not to mention they both already have an enormous amount of responsibility and stress. At best, these factors combined would create a weaker version of what we have now. At worst, the music programmers would still be far apart. One thing mentioned was the topic of scheduling. The choir teacher only teaches four class periods. Officially, this is true. However, the lessons don't simply stop when class is over. Students are tutored on solos and shows are prepared for constantly during the remainder of the day. So, there is no time to spare. So, as someone who loves the school, as I know you all do, I beg you to consider the students and what's truly going to help us. During music classes, hundreds of students learn important skills like public speaking, teamwork, that's your two minutes. Oh, you look sorry. like you have a whole lot of pages. Can you give uh, us this? Right quick, uh, this is actually a petition I have prepared. It has 194 signatures from students at Clary and Mimes High School. personal note. 
She supported me every single step of the way through my music career, from spring concerts to all Eastern ensembles. She helped me and my classmates, classmates way more than anyone can imagine. During 2020 and 2021, when the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic hit, we lost all forms of our concerts. We couldn't perform for anybody, and that's not why we're in band. We, we're in it to perform, not rehearse. And thanks to Mrs. Bennett, we were able to have performance Fridays and pregame shows. I don't think you guys really understand how much that meant to us and to have our small performances again. It really meant the world to us. Without someone to hold Mrs. Bennett's position, we'd lose all of that again. All in all, I want to thank Tina Bennett for all that she has done for our music department. And finally, I hope I made a difference here today and was able to help the board members make up their mind on how to vote. Thank you and have a good evening. sensations in the Triumph Music Honor Society. I would like to encourage the board members to plan to hire a new music teacher to fill Mrs. Bennett's position. Clary Limestone has been able to provide students with inspiring opportunities outside of course content, thus producing students who are successful, proud, and prepared to thrive as the mission states. The variety of enriching courses, such as those taught by Mrs. Bennett, provide students with new opportunities for learning. However, putting the responsibilities of Mrs. Bennett's position onto others who also have many other responsibilities is unrealistic when considering such daunting expectations. It takes a dedicated teacher to be able to run Mrs. Bennett's position. Their attention must be undivided towards this subject in order to successfully enrich the students who are involved in such musically oriented courses. Music education provides an outlet for student creativity and is paramount to child development. Not only does it enable students to develop areas of the brain related to language and reasoning, but it also assists in the development of social skills. Such traits, such traits are essential to developing versatile students. By investing in opportunities for students to seek learning content other than that of course subjects, a well-rounded student body in which is prepared for the future will be produced. According to the Clearing Limestone Area School District website, part of the school board's mission is to ensure that all students are prepared for college and a successful life academically, socially, and emotionally. In order to do this, Mrs. Bennett's position must be filled and not dispersed among other teachers. The position calls for a dedicated worker who is able to keep the fire burning that Mrs. Bennett started 37 years ago. Without this, the multifaceted learning experience at Clarion Limestone has a great potential to fade away. I hope that you consider this in regards to the replacement of Mrs. Bennett's position. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Isabella Barboza and I am a senior. I am here to speak on behalf of the Triumph Honor Society, Sensations, and as an active student in the Clarion Limestone Music Department. I am here to advocate for the replacement of Mrs. Bennett's position as high school music teacher. Clarion Limestone's strong vocal leadership has allowed me and many other students to reach our full potentials in many areas. I have proudly represented Clarion Limestone High School at PMEA District and Regional Chorus. However, this is not because of my own efforts, but because of the undivided attention and the personal coaching coaching sessions that Mrs. Bennett has been able to provide for me. Because of Mrs. Bennett's vocal knowledge, I was also able to compete for and receive the title of 2019 Miss Teen Autumn Leaf Festival. This opportunity has allowed me to proudly represent Clarion Limestone High School at multiple Clarion County events. However, without Mrs. Bennett's vocal support, I may have not been able to do so. It is impossible for two full-time teachers to assume the intense workload that Mrs. Bennett is leaving behind. Not only does she teach us how to read music notes or how best to hit a high note, but as a vocal instructor, Mrs. Bennett teaches the importance of believing in one's passions. At Clarion Limestone, we are taught to be well-rounded individuals who are not afraid to walk the road less traveled. At Clarion Limestone, we are taught that no dream is impossible. By limiting the high school vocal department, students too are limited in their ability to even explore vocal performance and theater. Some dreams then become impossible. Choir is not just a class. Music is not just a hobby. At Clarion Limestone, we are passionate about music. As a future alumna, I hope to be able to return to my alma mater and find students who too have been given the opportunity and attention to be passionate about music. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Tori Bigner. I am a junior. Today I have decided to speak on behalf of Triumph Music Honor Society about a potential change in staffing in the music department. After 37 years of service, Mrs. Bennett's decision to retire leaves a vacant position in the department. Mrs. Bennett has worked with hundreds of students in her career and has made an individual impact on every single one of them. 
not filling this position and instead pushing classes onto Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Coulson's already full schedules is not only not feasible, but it does not line up with their specialties. Both Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Coulson specialize in instrumental music and joyful music. While these two teachers are very talented at what they do, it's simply not possible for them to take over all of Mrs. Bennett's classes and teach to the same degree that she did, all while teaching their own classes. I know that music plays a big part in so many people's lives, including my own. As a junior, I've been involved in the music department since I was in fourth grade. I started band in fourth grade and choir in fifth. This year, as a junior, I have also participated in both district and region chorus with the help of Mrs. Bennett. So please, consider what would happen to the student body if we don't replace Mrs. Bennett. The student body and community will re rely on music within their lives. With only two teachers, our, our now flourishing music department will dwindle due to the lack of time that our teachers have available. Please consider making decisions that will benefit the student body and the teachers in the community and the music department as a whole. Just because Mrs. Bennett is irreplaceable, that doesn't mean her position shouldn't be filled. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maya Shook, and I'm the current junior class president here at CO. Tonight, I'm here to speak about how dangerous it would be to not refill Mrs. Bennett's position in the high school. While the program might be able to function without this teacher, it will not be able to strive. Without this position, not only will there be a large void in the music department, but the types of creative arts, like guitar and keyboard classes at the school right now, will start to be lost as well. Types of activities and events will have to be sacrificed because there is not enough time in the day for the two current, current music teachers, Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Colson, to take on the immense projects that Mrs. Bennett would do daily. They will physically not be able to fit everything into their already busy schedules, which will cause the electives to disappear, which makes possible opportunities for students to disappear along with them. Also, by cutting this position, scheduling issues will start to, start to arise. If there are only certain periods for music classes to occur so they work with the teacher's schedules, students might be forced to choose between academic and creative courses. These creative courses are what inspire some students to really strive for bigger goals. A certain portion of the student body in this school participates in the creative arts, and it guides some to possible career options. Students use classes like choir and band to really show their voice and who they are. Music is in everyone's lives. By removing this position, it would be removing some people's voices. Without that voice, there is no outlet for people to have. Everyone has a certain outlet that is directed towards music, because music is in everything. There is never a moment where music does not impact the soul of everyone. So, so I am going to leave you all with this quote by Plato that truly shows just how much music does for everyone. Music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, light to the imagination, and light to everything. Thank you. Woo! this year to be the Vice President of Triumph Music Honor Society for the 2021-2022 school year. I have been a student of Mrs. Bennett for, for seven years. I started as a fifth grader in choir and I am now still participating in sensations as a junior. Without those seven years, I would have never realized how much music affects all of our lives. As my last year of high school approaches, I am sad that I cannot have Mrs. Bennett as my senior music advisor. But cutting her position will not only let down the music department, but also for the students who have worked so hard to be where they are today. As a first grader, I was beyond excited to someday be a future sensation, and now that I am a sensation, I would hate to see that the younger kids that also wish this won't get to experience this opportunity. I think we need to be considerate about the younger generations moving forward. Not only sensations, but look at all the mu musicians we have in this school. Our elementary band kids hope to be a part of the high school band someday. Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Colson are exceptional teachers, but I cannot fathom the stress they would take on running the school department by themselves. We have to think about all the concerts and performances as well, not only the underclassmen, but the seniors. Evening with Sensations has been a hit for 37 years, and Evening with Sensations is the time we get to hear all the seniors' voices. Without an advisor there to rehearse and teach all these students individually, that concert would never happen. You preach that our wants and needs are your priority, but when we have a large group of kids here sharing their wants for this music department, your views seem to have changed. I believe music is just as important as all the other required classes we take. Please take the time to consider all of our thoughts. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Taylor Reitz, and I am a senior that resides in Limestone Township. I'm speaking on behalf of the Triumph Music Honor Society and the impact of Mrs. Bennett and the music department at Clare and Limestone. As Mrs. Bennett has decided to retire after 37 years, we as students feel that having a vacancy in her position will not be possible, functional, or feasible. Leaving her position empty would not only hurt our music department, but would quite frankly be an insult to all of the years that she has put into making this school what it is today. 
Mrs. Bennett teaches 7th through 12th grade choir students along with instrumental and theater classes. It is not right nor fair to allow these classes to be passed on to Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Coulson to take on with little to no time left in their schedules. Don't get me wrong, these teachers are great, but the time, effort, and logistics of this is not possible for any person no matter how great of a teacher they are. The only other option would be to cut these classes, and you have stated yourself that so you have no plans in cutting any part of the department. I have also been involved in dance team for five years, and Mrs. Bennett is the leader of that activity. Seeing that being put on the chopping block honestly saddens me, even though I won't be here next year to participate. I am not one to speak up much, but when there is something I am passionate about, I will use my voice and state what I believe in. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jacob Rankin, and I'm a senior from Williamstone Township. School Board. I encourage you to take a second and imagine a school board with two people, an administration with two people, or a math or science department with two people. These are entirely unrealistic, just as it would be if Mrs. Bennett's position was not filled. Imagine a biology teacher who is forced to become a chemistry teacher. Both are sciences, yet have completely different roles and aspects of the board. This is the same in our current situation, in that Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Coulson are both instrumentally oriented, while Mrs. Bennett is vocal. This, this would create a tremendous conflict if she was not replaced. Simply put, music is the universal language. When we sacrifice music, we lose the freedom to express ourselves and the social interaction and collaboration that arises from these music classes. Mrs. Bennett's teachings go beyond the realms of musical knowledge. She has taught myself and countless others life lessons that we will keep with us for the rest of our lives. She has taught us to acknowledge our emotions and be assured in our confidence. Mrs. Bennett's impact is instrumental to this school, and a vacancy in her spot would demean this very impact. While her character and impact may be irreplaceable, her job position is not in the slightest. With that, I leave you with this. Even if the loss of a music teacher may function, will it thrive as your mission statement calls for? Thank you. Hello, my name is Lauren Hartle, and I live in Horsca. <laughs> um, on behalf of the Triumph Music Honor Society, as president, I would like to take this opportunity to speak with you all concerning the importance of music education and specifically share with you how necessary it is to fill the choir director position. The subject of music is introduced to kids in elementary school thanks to Mrs. Coulson and her general music classes. Her classes, starting in kindergarten, teach children information about music composers, instrument families, and even attempt to have them learn songs and dances. Further knowledge can be attained during high school where students are not only required to take general music courses in seventh and eighth grade, but they are also encouraged to take other classes such as band. Many kids find themselves electing to take even more music classes that are available such as music theory, instrumental lessons, and advanced choir programs such as sensations. This is the result of their interest being piqued during their early exposure to music. These music programs have been provided, these music programs have provided students with a creative outlet that would not have been possible without the music education they received from all three teachers individually, Mrs. Coulson, Mrs. Hubler, and Mrs. Bennett. For nine years, music has been a key part of my development, and this is thanks to Mrs. Hubler, who has dedicated her time to the band program. Similarly, as I cannot speak for those who have been a part of choir programs, I can assure you that Mrs. Bennett has worked equally hard to ensure the success of her students. With that being said, Mrs. Hubler, Mrs. Bennett, and Mrs. Coulson have all worked with each other to provide students with the chance to be a part of all of the music education programs available. They have established a way to divide the demanding workload. Not filling that choir director position will push more work onto the individual teachers, Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Coulson, who have already taken on several other classes to teach. Mrs. Bennett has been so much more than just a choir director. With her position focusing on vocal performances, she is connected with her students and gave them a quality education. In order to achieve the same level of experience, a qualified vocal instructor needs to be hired so that their attention can be concentrated on that specialty. Imagine a wedding where the bride walks down the aisle without music. Imagine your birthday where your friends don't know how to sing to you. Now imagine a school day without hearing all the students humming in the hallway the songs that they learned in choir. Music is a part right, of the human two experience. Two minutes, here, two minutes. Can you give us a final sentence, please? Music is a passion, and it deserves all of the best options possible. We plead with you to not remove this significant aspect from the students of our school. Thank you for your time and consideration. My name is Riley Ransom, and I am from Clarion, and I'm here to represent the ninth grade choir. Um, I remember being in kindergarten and watching Sensations and Mrs. Bennett teaching them, and thinking that is what I wanted to be. 
I've been with her since seventh grade now, and the class has changed my life among many others. She has made me more confident and able to get out of my comfort zone. I hate public speaking, and I'm standing here right now talking about it because I love Mrs. Bennett so much and what she has done. Now, I do believe that no one can make the same impact that Mrs. Bennett has, but these teachers can't either. They have not made their dedication towards this part of the job because that is not their passion. I understand that Mrs. Hubler and Mrs. Folsom are options and can be utilized, but why not utilize someone who truly would love the job? These two teachers will be taking over her classes because they had to, not because they applied for the job and really wanted it. The choir classes have become a safe space for a lot of us. We talk about our own personal lives and experiences, and Mrs. Bennett has created this space for all of us because she cares and has a passion to be involved with us and be there no matter what. That same passion and dedication wouldn't be there because the teachers wouldn't be able to put all their time into the choir. If the passion isn't there, it will reflect on us as the students. We won't have the confidence to talk about things and speak out in our safe space won't be there anymore. For some of us, we don't have one when we go home, so rely on choir being the place we are ourselves and can fully let go. If the teacher is just there because they have to be, we may lose the classes altogether because there's no interest from the teacher, so why would there be interest from the students? Choir has been a big part of my life, and even though the program may still be here, I would hate to see it struggle and go downhill. We need someone with the same passion in choir that Mrs. Bennett had when she started and still has today. One of the biggest lessons Mrs. Bennett has taught us is to seize every opportunity we get, through the good and the bad. This may be someone's opportunity, and you aren't even giving a chance for them to take it and make something good out of it. And I would also like to say, Mrs. Bennett, we all love you and appreciate you putting all your time and heart into us, even when we were very difficult. is making by not filling the vacancy for Mrs. Bennett. Let me just say, Mrs. Bennett, thank you for your passion and your dedication to our kids and school district. You are a true mentor and we wish you the best. Music has the power to influence the mood and behavior in people and it's used at every available opportunity. It is used to soothe, hype up, to educate, to entertain and for medical purposes, just to name a few. And anybody that knows me, that happens to pass me, you'll see my children and myself car dancing because we absolutely love music. Do some research on the power of music. Speak to our children and they will gladly tell you why choir is important to them and what they love about it. What are the benefits to the taxpayers and the students if the vacancy isn't filled? How, how am I going to benefit from that? But my child is going to suffer. I'm not okay with that. You are expecting Mrs. Colson and Mrs. Hubler, who isn't a vocal teacher, she's a wonderful teacher though, to step up and take on an extra role with the past year, the way it has been. What else do you want our children to lose? They have lost so much already. We have seen in the news many children, which hopefully we don't have anything like this, but many kids have taken their own lives. And it may seem stupid over a music class or a choir class, but this is things that happen every single day. I moved my children into Clarion Limestone School District because of every teacher that they would be able to encounter. The passion and the love that the teachers here have for Clarion Limestone is what made me want all of my children to come here. I didn't graduate from here, but my children will because I believe this is the best school district for them to be in. And I ask you to please rethink about filling the vacancy because Tina Bennett is one in a million, but we need that next one in a million for the rest of the kids coming through here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Linda Colson, and I live in Limestone Township. Um, this is not just about 
the music program, but as CL as a whole, as a district. Tonight I want to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the hours upon hours that Christy Taylor and Tina Bennett have given to this district. These ladies not only shared their joy of music, but they also had an outpouring of love for the CL students by empowering, encouraging, and inspiring them each and every day. Also, in the next moment of silence, I want, to think, I want you to think about the students who will not have these opportunities at CL because the remaining staff will be spread too thin. Functioning does not mean flourishing. So please, can we take a moment of silence? this meeting tonight, watching you as a board and administration talking with each other and being transparent with each other. Please, if you do not start listening to each other and working together, silence is what you're going to hear for years to come. Because silence of the children who haven't had a chance to find their voice yet or be encouraged by an administrator every day in the elementary. So please, take this into consideration. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Krauss. Uh, I've lived in Limestone Township for about over 30 years now. I've had three kids go through the district, and I have a grandson here now. Um, I come from a very musical family. I've given out my letter to most of you, but I don't know if I brought it on. But I just want to cover something that hasn't been covered. These students were wonderful. And because I'm a piano teacher that I've been teaching kids music for 20 years myself, I know how important these things are to kids. It's just such, a, a, it's their whole life. Regina was the first one and she said it. Music is her whole life. It's what engages her and makes her want to get up and come to school some days. So I just want to uh, agree with those kids because I was one of those kids growing up. Uh, you can read my background in my letter. But one thing that hasn't been touched on is just the purely the business aspect of this decision. This proposal um, could really do some damage to the image that has been polished in this district. When we first moved here, when we heard about Clarion Limestone from people in the Clarion area, they referred to it as CL, Cattle and Livestock. And that was a sad thing for us because we moved our kids to the country to be here. But as the years went on, we watched the district change and grow and become a place that was desirable to live in. And when you go to a Zillow website now or go to uh, realtor.com, Seattle's the highest ranked district in this area. And I'm telling you that if you start cutting extra things, positions that people uh, find beneficial for their children, they'll start looking in other districts. Um, a good example of this right now is that Clarion, which was always when we first moved here, the district that, oh, they were so proud they were Clarion people. And they lorded it over Seattle. A lot of you remember those days. Uh, Clarion just had a music teacher resign as well. And they considered doing this exact thing. Guess what? They're filling the position. I saw it advertised in the paper. Their band director's leaving. So Clarion has seen the wisdom of filling these positions and giving families and kids lifelong skills, things that they can be doing well into their 70s and 80s. So I would just highly recommend, unless you want to see this image tarnished that people have worked so hard to build up over the years, Please fill this position. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Nicole Oaks, and I am live in Union Township. And I am a parent of two elementary students, but when I associate myself with the district, I typically say that I am a teacher and I am the coach of the cross country team. But if you rewind um, 16 years, 
ago here at the class of 2005 at Clarion Limestone, I was awarded the John Philip Sousa Award as well as the Outstanding Senior for Music. So the music department here at Clarion Limestone has shaped who I am today. My initial thought when I heard the decision was that this position wasn't going to be filled and I was a little unsure about it. I heard the district's response stating that the administration said all the required courses would be covered. And to me that made sense. I know that Mrs. Bennett has a few study halls. I know Mrs. Hubler is helping in another department and I know Mrs. Colson has lunch duty. But then I started to think about the memories that I made here in the music department. When I reflect on those memories, the things I think of are my times at the elementary eclipse, of course the Friday night football games, the marching band trips to Chicago, Walt Disney World, band adjudication, learning to play jazz and music theory. I find, fondly remember going to district and county choirs and band. There I got to interact with other musicians from neighboring schools and learn under prominent directors in our area. I remember evening with sensations and participating in the Young Americans workshop twice. And I remember the trip that Mrs. Bennett took us to Erie, where we got to perform in front of another elementary school. It didn't seem like a big, big deal, but we felt like stars to those kids. Those experiences cannot be equated into a few study halls, a math class, and a lunch duty. Most of these experiences took us out of the school for the day. How does the school plan to cover for those directors whenever those experiences happen? Our district website says that we encourage creativity and optimal performance in all academic and extracurricular endeavors. I want to know what experiences my two daughters are going to be missing moving forward in the Clarion Limestone music program. Their father and I both had the privilege of participating. Our students and our teachers are more than just blocks of time on a spreadsheet. We can't expect even more from individuals who are already going above and beyond. And we simply cannot expect to do the same with less. since sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth and tenth grade. These children were organized, they were confident, and they learned that on that stage with the two of us working together. They learned that. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. Well done. Thank you so much for all the great things. Two things. Number one, this is a fact. My announcement of my retirement was done during scheduling prior to the board receiving my resignation letter to the students. There's your number deficit. The kids had no idea. I had students coming into my room. You had not, you had not voted on my letter uh, yet. And the kids came in and said, you're retiring. I said, what? How did they know? You had not voted on it yet. It was announced as full disclosure prior to them filling out their elective schedules. So no, they did not sign up for the electives, obviously, because they didn't think they were going to be offered. That is a fact, because I wrote an email to Jeff telling him that it was not his information to give. You hadn't even received it yet, and he was telling it to the students. There is your numbers problem. I started this year with 13 in ninth grade choir and ended with 22. I started this year with three in keyboard class and ended with seven, and on and on. That's how that goes sometimes. Kids start their schedules out and then they come back in. We find them. So that is a fact you need to be aware of, okay? The other fact is in this new schedule, they will absorb the ninth grade choir into the senior high. That is what they're looking at doing. That is not a good idea. Vocally, it is not a good idea for their maturation level. That ninth grade choir has built the confidence of these, confidence of these ninth grade children to become 10th graders. They are not ready to be in senior high chorus in ninth grade, vocally or maturity wise. But that is what they're looking at, is absorbing them. They're, they took, back when we went to two teachers, they took our four classes of general music. Okay, so I have all the seventh graders in general music and choir. So you take those, you cut them in half, and I have 35 kids in here. 
at period 10 of the day, seventh grade, to try to teach them a general music course. It's a nightmare. Oh, by the way, don't forget, this is the corridor that leads to the cafeteria for 10th period study hall, which I have to fight all the comments that go down through, and some of them have been interesting, let me tell you, uh, while I'm trying to teach my class. It used to be I had four sections, two choir and two general music. They have crushed that down, actually technically eight, so that I had a class of maybe 15 to 20 kids in general music divided in half, and the choir was combined together for that semester. We've divided that and clumped that all up, and so now I teach 30 kids general music at a time. I can't even get into the lab and work on any music writing programs because there's not, there weren't enough computers for them to work on. They compressed and compiled everything and just jammed it all up more, and I've made it work. That's what you're not hearing. That's what you're not hearing. Split the general music back to where it needs to be so these kids get a good, solid foundation. That's what you need to do. Not just jam them all together, stack them up, and shove them in a room. That's not how we work. That's not how we as a district work. We do what's best for our students. Chorus ensembles, of course we want larger groupings. It adds for more confidence. But you know what's happened this year? We added small ensembles. Why? Because COVID caused that. We had a small ensembles concert where these kids were in small groupings. It was phenomenal. They were playing multiple instruments, singing, ukuleles, guitars, vocal, forehand piano, and on and on and on for over an hour and a half. And these kids did it all themselves. You know where Mrs. Huberlin and I were? Backstage. The kids did it all themselves. That's what we provide for them. <laughs> One last thing. So this is what COVID gave the music department. Pre-game pep rallies outside, and then the entire football team, marching band, cheerleaders, dance team, and all walked up together to that field together. As a district, those kids were together, united, one up there, and then kicked butt on the field, as they always do. As our kids together, cheering, performing halftime, pregame dancing. We did that together. The parents could come see them. You couldn't have done that. No other school district did that. We did the Happy Birthday Project. Did you know we reached out to 98 senior citizens in nursing homes who were not seeing their parents or their, their children and, and, and their grandchildren? Our kids, one, every single one, all the way down through eighth grade, every single one of those vocal kids did an individual video and sent a happy birthday message to someone they didn't even know. And you know what? They learned a whole lot about that, about themselves and giving back to the community while stuck in their own room during COVID. That's what the music department came up with. Okay? We also, very sad place where we don't have anything extra. No pep rallies, no anything, and that wasn't anyone's fault. That was a COVID cost. So we decided, hey, we're gonna do some performing in here on period two, the enrichment time. The kids did, they started coming, they started performing. The next week we did it again, we did it again. The marching band performed in the, in the, in the gym and back and forth and we've done, the ninth graders volunteered to come and sing extra songs and the kids came and they loved it. Who did that? The music department. Right. They made it better to be here every day. They made it better, we make it better, and we do cooperative learning, and we teach these kids math, English, science, history, and emotional SEL, social emotional learning, which is huge these days, because their emotional state right now this year has been up and down. Yes? Yes. In closing, I am a dedicated teacher. I have taught for 37 years and given every ounce of my life to this place in more than just the music department, and you well know that, and I will not harp on that. And I have a great program that I built and, and I worked hard with. Do not, those are two separate things. You can still have a good music department and still lose a dedicated teacher because there is another one ready to come in and they're gonna take that and they're gonna own it and make CL their home just like I did. Yeah. If you want candidates, I have people from Penn State, IUP, and Slippery Rock ready to go and a guy from Kansas City yeah. with experience. Woo. You want names? I'll give them to you right now. I have those 
professors on speed dial. You want names? There are passionate instructors out there ready to step into a successful program and make it their own and continue all the programs we've started and grow more. I will gladly mentor that person and help them navigate their way through during the summer. I will not come in and interrupt their relationship with the children. They need to build that. I won't do that, but I will gladly support that. These children are worth it. You know why? Because your kids were worth it. Thank you. Sorry, Mill Creek Township, class of 2001. I was president of the band and I continue to be very passionate about music education here in the district. Uh, at first and foremost, I want to be absolutely positive that all of you were really focused on that time before 2008, whenever there were two music teachers, and it did not work. As evidenced by the fact that you now have three. Just like Mrs. Henry, I believe, right? I brought up. Like, you all of need to look into that and you maybe go back to past administration and find out why it didn't work, because it didn't work. Two, the thought that you're going to bring in kids and teach ukulele and guitar in a study hall is ridiculous. Excuse me. You're not only not going to get a quality ukulele lesson, you're going to ruin the study hall for 30 kids. They're going to study when there's a kid playing ukulele over in the corner. It's not going to work. Why do schools have three music teachers? You will be hard pressed to find a school in the state of Pennsylvania who only has two. There may be some, but there are not many, and there are reasons for that. I'd just like to say the things I learned in music education here from a robust and powerful music program stay with me to this day. Make me a better person, a better father, a better teacher, and a better citizen. Thank you. I also want to thank all these children and students for what they've done for me. on social media singing the praises of the $4.85 million fund balance this district holds. He also stated, quote, if we could not have a quality education at CL with a $15 million budget, something is wrong somewhere. Well, maybe there's something wrong, and maybe what's wrong is the constant reduction in staff. It sounds like money shouldn't be a primary concern. Keeping the conversation to money, consider this. 
A first year teacher versus a top step teacher would save $23,505. Significant. A half time teacher versus a full time top teacher would save $48,000 plus benefits. That's very significant. If this truly is a half time position, hire a half time teacher, stop the insanity, and move on. Save the program. Staff reductions equal less choice and leads to more reduction in programming. These ripples are not exclusive to the music program. School wide impacts. So they have school wide impacts and they negatively affect the students. Mrs. Bennett mentioned the numbers issue is because the timeline of the information that was shared. The numbers issue also come into play as the kids change their schedules once school begins. If they don't know an elective is available or they're being told they're not sure who the teacher is, why would they be interested in it? Cutting for the sake of cutting eliminates student choice. Staff reductions result in cutting quality rather than cutting costs. In the past four years, if this proposal moves through, four vacancies of professional staff will remain unfilled. The results in that have been an increased elementary class size in some grades. It has been a reduction of student offerings at the high school. And where has that money gone? If the savings for one teacher is $100,000, $400,000 is significant. Where has it gone? These considerations are considered administrative decisions versus board decisions. I don't disagree. I respect that every vacancy should be evaluated. I also understand that there were administrative decisions made this year through the mitigations of COVID about our instructional models, but the board directed and changed that plan. There were also five, per, five day per week instructional arguments for months. It was an administrative decision to maintain remote Wednesdays. The board stepped in and directed that change. Here we are. Nothing bad has happened when we return to five days of instruction, but nonetheless, it was an administrative decision that the board overruled. Look at your students. I know many of them have left. They have busy schedules. Listen to them. They are why we are all here. Kudos you for exercising your right to speak. Kudos to your teachers for helping you make those paragraphs possible. I cannot accept that in your heart of hearts, you believe this is in the best interest of our students. My name is Nick Brown, Limestone Township. Um, I think we can remember, it was it last year, we didn't replace the shop teacher, we dragged our feet in that, how hard it was to find that teacher. That's a specialty teacher, music teacher, specialty teacher. Um, right now, college is letting out. This is, more, this is probably, Dave, you want to look for a principal right now. Why? Because this is the time they're letting out. If we want to wait three months from now until school goes back, oh, we better look for that teacher. They're not going to be there. They're going to be taking up better schools. We need to look now, not a month from now. We need to replace them now. That's all I got to say is we don't need a repeat of that shop teacher again. Thank you. Besides the uh, PSBA program, Amy, would you want to give us a 
Yes, we um, looked into this. The IU is a training, approved training session. It is $40 to train a new board member who hasn't been on board before. And it's two nights and they even give you dinner for $40. And if you are a returning board member, re-elected, it is $25, I believe, for that training, it's one night. So at the most, with four open positions, if those four positions, or four, I apologize, they're not opening, they're not open, they are, um, elect, the election is going on for four seats. If those four seats became brand new people, it would cost $160. Um, I also am, um, we reached out to our solicitors they do not get the PSBA um, policies that are handed out, but there is another source to get that from for free, which I have located. So I think it's we can try it, um, and I think it will be fine. If not, we look back and see what we need to do next year. Make motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Dave. Is there a second? Second. Uh, we'll give that one to Rebecca. It was close. Uh, any further discussion among the board? Okay, this is a roll call vote on it, please. consideration to approve uh, for approval to adopt the uh, proposed final budget display advertising etc that Stephanie went through for us before thank you Stephanie for that uh, do I have a motion to approve that so moved second Joe with a motion and Gary with a second thank you any discussion on the board not hearing any Donna roll call vote please Thank you, motion passed. Item B, the following depositories for 2021 through 2022. I'm not gonna read them all, you guys can see them. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Joe with the motion. Second. Kathy with the second, thank you. Any discussion? Donna, roll call vote, please. Lori Dish? Yes. Dave Eggleton? Yes. Motion passed. Item C, consideration for approval to appoint Brooks and Rhodes CPA. That's our uh, current CPA that we've been using. You can see the cost this year versus last year. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, I have Joe the motion. I heard him first, I believe it was. Kathy will give you the second, is that okay? If Kathy says yes, she seconds. Any discussion, questions among the board? Not hearing any, Donna, roll call vote, please. Item D, consideration for approval to retain both of our existing legal counsel for the next fiscal year. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Gary with the motion. I heard Joe with a second. Any discussion on the board? Quick question. Why do we need two? Uh, they, they have offer different uh, specialties, different personalities. There's things that Amy goes to Peter with that she's more comfortable, he's quicker to respond. And there's things that Carl is vice versa. He's quicker to respond and easier to talk to. So we find it gives us flexibility to get a quicker answer. Any we further? Don't pay a retainer with either one, right? What's that? We don't pay a retainer with either one. Is that correct? I don't believe there's a retainer, no. 
And I think their hourly rates are very close too, if I recall. Um, the discussion there, Kathy and Amy and Don and I, we, this is the information that's been sent to the board already. There, there's no retainer and their fees are very, very close. Yeah, and to answer your question, David, so it would be for the Maiello firm, if he comes to a meeting, it would be uh, $450 for six meetings. Sure. Any other discussion or questions? Thank you, Don. Not hearing any, Donna, when you get done with your papers, we'll do a roll call vote, please. I have D. for approval to extend our existing transportation contract, quote, as is, for one year. Make a motion. Gary, I have a motion. Sounds like Joe with a second. Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Not hearing any. Donna, roll call vote, please. consideration for approval of the Career Center total budget. i just like to note in there, I know Joe, you're involved with there. I do appreciate the fact that it looks like you guys have trimmed your budget a little bit from last year. That's, yes. I, I do appreciate that. As a taxpayer, I just want to say thank you. And add the explanation too that I understand, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can see that our CL's share is higher. I believe it's because we have more, more enrolled. So, is, right, right. So, just just to explain what we're voting on, that's what the motion is, or the proposed uh, the proposed item. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Joe has the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Kathy, I think I heard with a second. Any further discussion on the board? Okay, not hearing any further uh, discussion. Donna, roll call vote, please. David Parker? Yes. Gary Cole? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Millard? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Eggleton? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Larry Jameson? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, item G. Um, consideration for approval of a contract of service agreement with Send Clear Child Services Inc. for school support therapist services. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Motion from Kathy, second from Joe. Do I have any further discussion with the board? Not hearing any discussion. Donna, roll call vote, please. Gary Cole? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Malott? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Motion passed. Item H, consideration for approval of the 2021 slash 2022 Blue Cross Blue Shield major medical rates as presented. Make a motion to approve it. Gary with a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second from Joe, thank you. Any further discussion from the board? Just to clarify, those, those rates are in our packet or they were given out previously? Any discussion? Donna, roll call vote, please. Gary Sproul? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Malad? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Eggleton? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Larry Jameson? Yes. And Daniel Parker? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, item I. Consideration for approval of the following 2021-2022 insurance renewal rates, as stated in your agenda there. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion from Joe. 
Uh, sorry, do I have a second? Yeah. Kathy with a second, thank you. Any discussion or questions from the board? Not hearing any, Donna, roll call vote, please. Consideration for approval of the uh, renewal rates for the, let's see how I make that short and sweet without reading it. Um, looks like insurance rates. Is that effectively what accurate summary? Okay, good. Do I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. Motion from Joe, second from Gary. Any discussion or questions from the board? Donna, roll call vote, please. Consideration for approval of the day-to-day -day substitutes listed in your agenda. So moved. Motion, okay. motion from Joe, second from Kathy. Thank you. Any discussion or questions from the board? Donna, roll call vote, please. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Nicholson? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Larry Jamison? No. Nathaniel Parker? Yes. Gary Stoll? Passed. Okay, item L, in case you guys are falling asleep up there. Uh, we actually have to talk about this one. Item L, we need to set, and Amy, you jump in if I get this screwed up, but we need to set our substitute rate for the next school year. We had increased the rate for this year to make it easier to attract uh, substitutes. From the administration is that it's been well received, it's been helpful to them. But the question is, what do we want to do for next school year? And I open it up to the board because the motion's blank, so we have to have a discussion and somebody needs to make a suggestion as far as what we do going forward. Leave it as is or else raise it. I would not lower it. Okay. I would absolutely I'm sorry, what did you say, Larry? Was that Larry that was up? Yeah. Do you recommend the microphone? Yeah. I would absolutely lower it. Um, I know I was sitting in the audience when this was made to $150 after it was stated that it was $100 when we were the highest around. I didn't understand at that time why we went the whole way to $150 instead of at least trying $125. Now, I'm going to defer some of those to probably Mel mostly. I think uh, Christy Taylor actually was instrumental in making the setting the number. That's how I recall it. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong, okay. but I think she threw the number out there. Do we know where our where we are within the districts around here? Um, yeah, the um, 150 is above what I know of the other districts doing. Um, several of them, and I believe it is in response to our 150 and us pulling um, subs from I did raise theirs. I think they were in around 120, 125 range. I'm um, not 100 percent sure. I think Amy got some of that data. <laughs> yes, um, they're all raising them because of us. They've asked many questions of, is it productive at that rate? And, and we said yes. Um, the what I'm seeing and being told is they are going to 125, 130. I move we go to 130. I second that motion. Okay, I've got a motion from Larry to go to, to have item L. Larry, you said if I'm wrong. You want to do item L as printed with a $130 included, correct? And Rebecca, you're second on that. Okay, do I have any further discussion on that motion? Since it's been successful, um, do, we think, do we not think this is going to hurt us in getting subs? It's 
not like there's an abundance of subs out there, right? So we always have a concern that we don't have enough substitutes when something happens. So there's not an overabundance of substitutes to begin with. Why are we lowering it? Because I feel like that we're just lowering it just because everybody else is lowering it. We want maybe some of these substitutes that actually come here, maybe they can end up being full-time teachers if, if positions open and we're hiring at that point and we've already worked with them. I, I'm just throwing it out there. I just I'm don't understand why we're reneging on something now that has worked for the district. My initial comment was gonna be, um, was, I'm the one that made the motion, I guess, to make it $150 when we talked about this. Um, my initial question was going to be, has this proven to be a hardship on the district though, making it $150 and then our expenses for substitutes is getting us out of budget or whatever the budget is for substitutes. I don't I don't know the answer to that question. Well, we raised it once before, we can always do it again if it doesn't work. Because I'm amenable to leaving it to at $150 a day absolutely I would I would second that motion as, as well or I would make that motion but I was um, looking at you know just compromising and saying 130 if we think that 150 was kind of an emergency situation I guess I'll just make a comment um, when you talk about the rates and the financial aspect of it when you just for your information so you're making an informed business decision it $100 an hour compared to $150, or um, excuse me, a day, a per diem, you're looking at uh, $9,000 $9, more a year if you have one substitute in the school district every day. So the difference in that rate for one substitute for 180 days was around $9,000. But th that's a that's a fluid rate. Am I correct? We can change that at any time if we see we aren't getting substitutes. Yeah, right. We put it on and then do it again. Right. This is just to set it. I think getting ready for next school year. That's my understanding. Quite a few guest teachers, and and not as many certified school teachers. I think that's just the way it is now. So we have a program that um, we pay five dollars for an emergency permit for them to be available to teach any grade K to twelve in the district. We have quite a few um, guest teachers too, that, um, and we've got more. I think because of the higher rate. Uh, yes, we've got more. My question was, if the guest teacher paid the same as the day-to-day, uh, -day, and I was told that yes, that's the same rate. So we're talking about the same, uh, same thing. Uh, Nathaniel, could we, and this is just for discussion, could we put a different number in for a guest teacher compared to a certified teacher? I mean, would that hurt us? I don't, yes. I mean, logically, I don't see why it would hurt us. I mean, as far as a legal issue, I don't, you know, we could obviously double check with uh, Carl or, or Peter. I mean, you're, you're talking about a certified teacher compared to a guest teacher. A guest teacher could be anybody, correct? Are, are all guest teachers not certified, though? No. We're paying extra for guest teachers. guest teacher would have a four-year degree um, they if they have any certification they would be underneath their certified teachers um, so uh, education wise they, there is a difference I didn't hear everything I'm sorry um, so we're talking about three different things we're talking about certified teacher guest teacher and substitute Larry, what was your question at the end there? The difference yeah, I, between I asked, well, so uh, a, a substitute teacher has to be a certified teacher. A 
guest teacher just has to have a four-year degree. I don't know that there was a third. Can someone substitute without a degree? I don't know. I just say we keep it one the same for all. We just Did you get all that, Dave? Yep. That was kind of an answer to your question, I think. You got it. All right, any other uh, we got a motion on the floor. I don't want to cut off debate though or conversation. Does anyone else have anything to add to this? Second at 1.30? Uh, we have, uh, thank you Gary, we already have a motion oh, okay. and a second, I believe. I believe, uh, I <laughs> okay, yeah, Larry made the motion and then Rebecca seconded. All right, we do a roll call vote on this. Donna, please. David Yes. So then that motion is defeated. If I understand it correctly, we have four. We don't have our ninth member here. Um, before we leave that, uh, do we, we can leave it and just let it go and talk about it another time, or if we, somebody wants to make a different motion. We'll make a motion to leave it at the as it is. And... Okay, we have a motion from Corey to make it item L on the agenda, right, Corey, but have 150 wrote it instead of 130, right? Right. Okay, and then thank you, Corey, then Kathy, you seconded it, correct? That's correct. I just want to point out that we've spent more time talking about $130 and $150 than we did replacing. I know, Rhonda, I know. This is probably going to get me some cookies oh, yeah. later. But um, <laughs> what, what more than we cookies? did talking about a, what a kind of cookies? music teacher. You say cookies? Cookies, yeah. Randy's a chef. What kind of cookies? You want cookies? Well, don't give me any kind of cookies you want. <laughs> I'm sure he's taking suggestions. Well, remember, we're not. I mean, in fairness to what we talked about, the, the music presentation was informational to get the conversation started. It was oh, not, I, it was not I, I the agree, end but it. as Gary just said, it's been a long night, and you know, you know, I, I'm not. Well, I'm sorry. I, I'm not a fan of overpaying for anything. So. And that nine thousand dollars that Stephanie said makes a difference could go toward a music session. Any further discussion on the motion on the floor? Well, I, do, I do have one more thing. I just want to ask our principal. Is it going to make a difference if we pay 150? I mean, it, it, are we going to be hamstrung by paying $130 instead of $150? That's a tough question there. I know it is. <laughs> well, let's ask it in reverse. Are we going to be screwed if we? Well, no. I mean, in his experience, that's, I mean, you know, I know substitutes are a very difficult thing to get, and and my point being. Do we need to overpay? That's that's all it comes down to. I, I no disrespect to anyone that's subbing. God bless them. But my point is, why would we overpay? Well, we could take a vote. I'm going to vote no, and maybe it'll be seven to one. That's fine. <laughs> Probably won't. But I guess I'm just saying. I mean, my my perspective is is that it, we already have it at this, and then now we're going to be telling people well, we're taking it back. We're going backwards. I look at it every school year is a new school year. So I understand. And I mean it's it's like you said, it's it's I understand both positions. I, I, I would just ask for Mel's comment and then I'm gonna call the question. But again, I haven't talked to many of this the cells about the, this as a handful of them that I spoke to about I, I think we just have to I think most of them understand that this was an emergency thing to jump up to 150. I, I do the worry as as any presented other schools in order to compete with us have have brought it up something. So that that's the only thing is where where do we compete now of course I guess teachers that came in they that have been other places they pointed out they love being here. They they I think it helped open the door to a few people so they may take less pay to, to be here. So two of the people on the list tonight are college professors. With all due respect, they're not doing it for the money. For, 
And one la last time as a retired university administrator, and I'm sure she is not doing it for the money. So. Yeah, I think it's I a lot of her kids in, in the atmosphere here. Mel, could you let us know kind of an average of how many substitutes you would have per day in the high school? You, for you just, to answer like a budgetary question. You, you just asked me right after we pulled off the uh, 15 people being out of it. <laughs> but, um, uh, I think I told Bear probably on average, it, and he kind of agreed with me. We're looking at across the district, five five people out of, out a day. Okay, so then if we're saying five, and it's nine thousand dollars a year per, so then we're looking at the substitute expense then. Forty five thousand dollars, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like I, I just, for, I'm saying this as the. differences from what we used to pay subs to $150. That's so 100 to 150 right? Five three votes, so that motion passes. Again, we can revisit that. If somebody wants to tell me, let me know. We'll revisit it, but that's the way it goes. And ma'am, consideration for approval of Bonnie Earhart as a detention supervisor. Okay. I can't keep track of who that was. Give it to Kathy on the motion. Joe on the second. Any further discussion? Larry, you want to talk about this one some more? I've got all night if you want. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> all right, then I'll roll call there. Kathy Henry? Yes. Mary Jamieson? Yes. Daniel Parker? Yes. Gary Sproul? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Villar? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Angle? Yes. Mel, important question. <laughs> Do I do detention tomorrow or is Bonnie? Or is there none? Okay, thanks. I'll get in touch with her. Okay. Item N, approval of the supplemental contracts as as listed in your your agenda. I have a motion to approve. Was that Corey? Corey with the motion. Second. Joe with the second. Is there any discussion? Down a roll call vote, please. Discussion? Donna, roll call vote, please. Daniel Parker? Yes. Gary Spool? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Bill Villar? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Eggleton? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Larry James? Yes. Motion passed. Item P. 
approval of annual support of the Corsica Volunteer Fire Company for the QRRS services provided at the home football game, $100 per game per season. Do I have a motion to approve? Kathy, motion, is that Joe with a second? Gary. Gary, sorry. Any further discussion? Donna, roll call vote, please. Gary Sproul? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Bill Galat? Yes. Corey Dish? Abstain. Dave Eggleton? Yes. Kathy Henrys? Yes. Larry Jameson? Yes. Daniel Parker? Yes. Motion passed. Item Q. Motion to approve Bob Coleman to purchase a combi oven at a cost of $6,645.55 and to approve a transfer of the same amount from the general fund to the cafeteria fund. Motion to approve. Motion from Joe. Second. Second from Kathy, I believe, and three others. Any discussion, questions from the board? Is this the same $20,000 oven uh, that we talked about? Yeah, originally had $20,000 and Bob got $3,000. Uh, Stephanie? Yeah, you're breaking the I'm sorry, I have to be a microphone Nazi. Yes, originally put 20,000 on there just because we had to have it. Um, and we weren't sure when we could get the quotes. Um, and we weren't sure what we were gonna run into with delivery just because of all the issues with COVID. Um, three quotes came in. They ranged from this was the lowest price and had a good delivery to up to $14,000. So we updated it once we got the quotes. Thank you. Any further discussion from the board? Donna, roll call vote, please. Gary Stroll? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Bill Bolan? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Eggleton? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Larry Jameson? Yes. Daniel Parker? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, let's all uh, take a minute and look down through. Items R through double A do not require, require, I can talk about, a roll call vote. So unless somebody wants to uh, pull something out, I'm gonna propose that we, I am gonna ask for a motion on items R through double A. So take a minute and look down through here, please. <coughs> I'm acknowledging your motion, but I just want to give everybody a chance to look down through. All right. Okay, I think that was Corey. Did you make the motion, Corey? Gary. I'm sorry. Gary made, thank you. Gary made the motion to approve item R through AA, and then Corey second. Any discussion from the board? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion passed. Motion to adjourn. Uh, 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 premature, but I'm going to play there. Um, and I realize it's been a long meeting, but. I appreciate you welcoming all the public comments. I'm sorry, what's that? I appreciate you welcoming all the public comments. Okay. Um, you're welcome, Ron. And I, you and I have talked, Ron, that transparency is important to me. And, that's why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it. With the conversation about Mel, I, I just, like you and I have talked, I don't want to have the innuendos and the rumors and the people making up their own facts. I want people to know what's happening uh, directly. Board members, I have been made aware of, of a potential issue with one of our policies, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. And again, similar to Amy's presentation, I don't do PowerPoint, so there is no presentation. It's just putting it out there for discussion. I do, I really don't want to have a motion. Of course, it's up to you guys, but I, I'm not anticipating a motion. I want to make you aware of a situation. We can have a discussion, and then uh, potentially at our June meeting, once everyone's had a time to talk to the stakeholders. And I would anticipate talking with Rhonda about this as well. Uh, decide whether or not we want to do anything. Uh, in, your, in your packet, is policy 202. And policy 202 talks about uh, non-resident students. And it's, it's kind of lengthy, but in summary, the, and I'm gonna have Mr. Edmonds 
give some information. So uh, bear with me. I'm just going to kind of introduce the topic, and then I'll have him flesh out a couple more details for us. The issue is that there was a policy started years ago by a prior uh, superintendent, prior board, et cetera, that provides that if you're an employee of the district, your child can come to the school here for no, no cost. And that was obviously, I've heard a lot of people talk, I mean, I wasn't there, so I can't tell you firsthand what uh, the actual thought process was, but the, I heard it explained by one person that typically teacher students are uh, more attentive, uh, more productive, uh, higher achieving, et cetera. So it's, it's thought to be an encouragement. It's also a nice perk for your employees. Um, the, the issue is, is that there's a situation where um, it's gone beyond just regular tuition and there is a fairly significant financial burden being absorbed by the taxpayers. And so again, I'm gonna have Mr. Edmonds give a little more details, but the whole point of me bringing this to your attention is so you're aware of the situation and then you can talk to people and ask questions about it and then we can all have an informed discussion next time as far as do we want to do anything with this policy or leave it as is. So with that, Mr. Evans, can you please give us a little more details? Yeah, so the, the conversation actually, so it, it did start a couple of years ago. Um, even students that do pay, parents that do pay tuition to come here, um, it's currently set up that it is tuition. Um, it is implied that that encompasses any other services that the student may qualify while here. Um, in doing so, there are other services that do potentially cost extra money and, and utilize additional resources that the district offers, um, whether that be 504 services, special education services, gifted services, um, you know, those types of things all, you know, start to start to add up and aren't included in tuition. And so looking at that, there has been some, I believe, unintended consequences as far as that goes uh, from a financial liability standpoint to the district. Um, and that's, that's for students that have even paid tuition to be here, not just the, the, the tuition waiver that is afforded to non-resident employees. Um, and so looking at that, there's a number of factors. Financially, there is, there's the, the component. There's also the component of caseload sizes. And so, you know, as students are on those caseloads, there are um, situations where <coughs> potentially would have to hire an additional employee or contract for additional, say, speech therapy services once they hit a certain caseload size. We have not had to do that for a few years. Um, I'm going to say probably five years ago we did um, have an additional speech therapist that we contracted for services with the IU. We also had the IU provide some additional speech therapy services for programs housed in our district because we didn't have the, the resources to be able to do that. Um, so there are there there are, have been some financial impacts because of, of the situation. Um, I did a lot of research and found that a very little known regulation exists within the law that if you have a student that it pays tuition or has a tuition waiver that attends your district, that the district um, that they are attending can contact the resident district and ask them if they are willing to pay the difference in service. And they can work out a, an agreement with that other district if they would like to do that. Um, therefore, I have spoken with the local superintendents that this would potentially impact, and every one of them uh, is not interested in having that conversation and have said that, you know, in a situation like that, uh, the student could enroll in their district since they are a resident and they would provide the service themselves. Um, so that's kind of, that's, that is it in a nutshell as far as some background to what Daniel was asked. Okay, so basically what, what we're talking about is we had a, a policy, uh, I think everyone understands the intent of the policy, but we've got some sort of nuanced issues, unintended consequences, as Mr. Edmund says, that has come up. And so the, there's a need, I believe, to, at, at a minimum, uh, revise the policy or amend or provide clarification, but that leads us into another issue, though, as far as uh, Mr. Edmonds and I and Amy have had, we, I've consulted with a solicitor to give you guys, because I knew that would be the question, well, what, what, what can we do, what can't we do? 
And so, Mr. Evans, could you address that issue? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, because it does impact additional services, you end up looking at potentially discrimination issues um, and things of that nature, which are near and dear to my heart, and I certainly would not not want to, uh, you know, violate. So that is that is definitely a concern um, as having a conversation with this. Um, so, you know, I think there are some considerations on whether the policy continues. Um, there, There's, um, you know, certainly, a prior board uh, can't tie the hands of a current board um, and say, you know, because this was good for us back then, that this is going to be it for eternity. Um, you know, that's why it is a policy, and so there is an opportunity to potentially change that. With that said, I think there's a lot of potential options, you know, with that policy, whether it is, it, it is removed wholesale or whether there are some changes to it or an understanding um, amongst, you know, um, even the, the non-resident employees that um, are afforded this, you know, whether the, whether there's a conversation with them and, and an understanding there, um, you know, uh, the, as far as the tuition is free and potentially um, they would pay the difference, you know, any other any other allocated car services and all of those things, I think could probably be conversations. What's that? We would, I mean, we would definitely have to have a conversation about it. I mean, it, it's one of those things where I'm not necessarily warm and fuzzy about that idea um, because I do believe it opens the door for some other issues. But well, that's, that's what council has told us. Yes. Is it the only way to do, to say you're 100% in the clear is to basically give away everything to anybody, whatever they want, give it to them, or to take it all away and give nothing? If there's any in-between, you have the potential, however far you go down that road, you increase your potential for somebody saying, hey, discriminating against me because you didn't give me everything I want for free. That's what the recommendation is, which is not where we want to be. Uh, that's why, obviously, this is something that is not a decision that Amy makes or I make. It's a decision for all of us to talk about and to consider. Um, Mr. Evans, could you talk to the financial impact? So, um, looking, at, looking at the last two years, um, there has been the potential of approximately $175,000 um, in services provided to students um, when you when you prorate those services out based on things above and beyond regular tuition. So in other words, you're saying that's we're not that number doesn't include, as I understand it, that doesn't include like saying what does a teacher salary cost divided by the number of kids? Is what did we have to purchase standalone? For one of the students in question, and provide for just them. Is that correct? There, it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both as far as the services prorated out for some a la carte services such as speech language therapy, um, and then some other services that we don't offer um, that we have to contract for as well. Okay, so it's all a la carte though. That's yes. not regular ed. That's correct. Okay, above that's and beyond guess. regular tuition. Um, and so, I mean, as Steph pointed out earlier. At roughly eighty-one thousand dollars being the mill, you know, we're looking at you know that's roughly two mills in the last two years. Right, and obviously we're talking about students in the, in the building now, so it's not like the problem is necessarily going away. It's the potential exists, and so again, um, I mean, at this point, is there anything else you want to add? I don't think so. That's a good question. Well, that's that's the point too. Again, board members, uh, I know this is new to you all, and again, it's not. We're not. I don't want a motion. Not asking for a motion. But if there's additional information you'd like us to look into, or you want Amy to look into, or Mr. Edmonds, or you want to ask questions, now would be a great time to share that. Hey, Daniel, is there, I don't know if we're, if you're kind of off of that as employee perk, if we eliminate that, is that going to cause any kind of union contractual thing? Well, anytime you do anything, you could have a possibility of a claim. Um, I don't believe that the contract, the current collective bargaining agreement, makes reference to it, but I can't tell, I can't tell you definitively. Okay, but, but the possibility certainly exists. There's nothing in the contract that I'm aware of. It's simply a board policy that was that was afforded. So we need to look at both sides, the pros and cons of like keeping it and revising it or deleting it. 
Yeah, this, is, this isn't an easy decision by yeah. any means, and obviously there's an awful lot of inner workings and a lot of moving pieces to it that I think do need to be considered. Um, so, you know, it's definitely not one to just vote on tonight or anything like right. that. And sure. definitely for sure, Kathy, my point is I feel like we should be transparent and make a knowing decision. If we, if we want to keep it, that's fine, but we need to know that that's the kind of money we're spending to do it. And I think we need to make it. I'm fine if the, the board, majority board wants to keep it as is and not change it, then that's exactly what we'll do. But if we decide that we want to make changes, then I, I just want everybody to be informed and know that it's out there. And then once you've had a month to kick it around, talk to people, like Larry said, maybe think of other ideas, alternatives, get back to me and let me know. I can run up the flagpole with the solicitor, et cetera. And then next meeting, maybe we could have another discussion and maybe end up with a motion on it. So the one, one question I have while it's still in my head, you know, for um, students that are getting a tuition waiver, however it's defined, does that really cost us money? Well, that's that's the point of the, the discussion is, right. is if it's, I, I think that's how the policy was, and I'm, this is speculation and conjecture, but I'm assuming that the, the intent, the good faith intent was it's not costing us any extra. We already right. have the teachers. It wasn't we're, we're already, that awful long ago. We're already busing the kids here, so there's not there's not a major cost increase in offer to them. Um, I can tell you that from the information that we were provided, we're in the minority as far as who offers it. There's not it's not like everybody offers this. Uh, it's the other way around. But in this situation or situations, I think uh, Jason has done a great job of being as general as, as you can, uh, when it starts actually truly costing us money, that's, that's really difficult. Well, that's, that's the point of the number he gave you. Right. I mean, we can break that down too, because I believe there are examples where it is truly a 100% standalone a la carte cost that is incurred because of just that one student. But we wanted to bring the whole issue to everybody and talk about the whole part of it, not just that one facet. But that is what is going on. Can I ask a question? How many students are students? How many employee students are here? Seven currently. Seven. I was, I, and there's just one of those seven that's causing the extra expense. I was just it's my to... understanding. Well, there, In my there, are seven, there are seven students that have a cost associated with them above and beyond regular tuition. Okay, so how many overall are how many? But even, I I'm think sure. what we're missing here too is one, even a student that doesn't have, is just here, you know, doesn't ungift it or anything like that. It's the cost of tuition. Yeah. We, we do pay that. Yeah. We don't get that back. Oh, I know. I'm just yeah. curious how many So that's, are. what, 10, 11,000. That's debated on by the state. That's just seven. Seven? Seven that costs extra? No. But how many? My understanding is seven is the one that costs extra, but just tuition, that would be an additional number, correct? Or did I misunderstand what you said? There are seven students this year currently enrolled that are non resident students that have a cost associated to them above and beyond flat rate tuition. Right, so I think Rhonda's question is do we have a number for how many are just regular tuition? Just well, I don't have that. I was so, just curious. No, but that's five or well, 19. I we can curious. get that, and like I said, Rhonda, I do anticipate probably having a discussion with yeah, you, you and Julie. To <laughs> Amy's telling me she thinks it's about twelve, but we'll get you. We'll get you. A, okay, um, ten o'clock. Any board members have any other questions on item double B? Okay. Uh, Dave, did you have a motion? Yeah, I sure do. Let's adjourn. Huh? Motion to adjourn from Dave. <coughs> and Gary, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no.